You're checking out the Opie and Anthony show. Bill Burr in studio playing Carolines in New York City, right? All weekend long, Bill. That's right. Thursday through Sunday. Very, very cool. A whole weekend of hilarity. Hilarity will ensue. Hi, <laughs> Jinx. Madcap mayhem. We got uh, David Tell at 8 o'clock? Yeah, David Tell at 8 o'clock. Very busy sh uh, show today. There's something I wanted to say real fast, but I forgot. I was just going to run down some of the things that uh, America is talking about. We already mentioned Keeper Sutherland. He's going to be uh, serving 48 days in jail for his drinking and driving crap. How come Paris Hilton gets like a few or uh, whatever and Lindsay Lohan got like an hour? And then he gets... <laughs> well, because Kiefer is just completely... <laughs> He's out of control. <laughs> the guy is really out of control. He loves his drink. I was going to say, I thought like he, he already went through these years, and then he got the hit 24, and then, then they already do like the People magazine, an older, more mature yeah, Kiefer you, Sutherland. You would assume that he would uh, have grown up. Like every all the other people I guess he hung out with back in uh, uh, his younger days. I guess lost they straightened up. Years. Yeah, the lost boys here. <laughs> that that kind of, that whole thing. But he just keeps pounding them down. I mean, so loves love drinking and hopping in the vehicle. And he's one of these guys, 48 days, he'll do that standing on his head, no big deal. And then he'll go back to drinking and driving. He's not going to change, right? Dude, uh, he does nah. a one-camera shoot show that's like 16, 18-hour days. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you got to booze after a while. Maybe that's it. I don't know, but... uh. He, he's got to lay off 48 days. When you're spending 48 days in jail, you really got to think, maybe maybe this is a problem. Nah. Maybe I'm in jail for this. You, you do know? the math like, like like Jim was saying, like the whole Paris. Like, all right, well, Paris, you know, she's got a vagina. She could hook somebody up with a little favor, so she's in and out of here in about 20 minutes. So yeah. carry the one. Yeah, I'll be out of here in 11 <laughs> days. Yeah. <laughs> Also, yeah, you get time served for good behavior or something like that. Time off for good behavior. Even if you're only serving 48 days, you got <laughs> good behavior. It's going to be like 12 or 13. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, also, you got Zeppelin. They're not sure if Monday is going to be the only uh, concert they do. That's I, ridiculous. I want to get tickets for that. For, 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 for the show on Monday in yeah. London? I think it's London, right? There's probably tickets available. Yeah. <laughs> I think if you walk up, they uh, they they yeah, there should like, be uh, some. Like eighteen thousand tickets are available. That's what I heard. <laughs> I think they're opening up some uh, lawn seats. I yeah. How many times is Jimmy Page going to remaster that those same five songs? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I already got suckered the first two times. And it's like, and every time you listen to it, you're waiting for this whole new sound. And all he does is he just adds a little more audio in the beginning. Now you can hear Bonham going, oh, one, and a two. And, <laughs> and then they just go into the song. It's like, dude. <laughs> yeah, the remastering of uh, the classic CDs and albums, enough already. Here's an outtake of Row, Row, Row Your Boat. We <laughs> decided we didn't want to put on physical graffiti. They figure out some way to just get you to pay for the same stuff over and over again. Yeah. That's what it is. And uh, I see you're wearing the, the Pats hat there, uh, Bill. Yes. Classic. You know the game on Monday night? Most watched cable program ever? Dude, it's, it's ridiculous. Ever. 17.5 million people were checking out the Pats uh, and the Ravens game the other night. It's the most overhyped thing ever. What? The whole Patriots season. It's ridiculous. Why is it overhyped? Because the Colts went 13-0 and two years ago. Nobody cared. We were 11-0 and the other night. They got Don Shula I'm like, why is he in there? And he's in the booth talking about it. And, like, I don't know. I think if the Patriots lose one game, they're going to win the Super Bowl. If they win 16 in a row, they're going to lose to the Colts. Okay. Because wow. people, people are so amped up. Do you see the Ravens fans? They're like a 4-8 and eight team. They're swinging towels. They're going crazy. And it's like a playoff atmosphere every week. But all, the pressure is only on the Pats. Yeah. And the other yeah. team has nothing to lose. And it's like if they're going to go another month of this, by the time they get to the playoffs, they're going to be it's burned gonna be out. It's going to be all burnt but, out. We brought this up a few times, and uh, what's what's your answer? Isn't it more important that the Pats go undefeated than winning another Super Bowl? They got all the Super Bowls, but now they could like add this to the the list of accomplishments that they went undefeated. Say they go oh, undefeated just, in the regular season, and right? And that, then, that would definitely be cool, but I would rather see them Super win another, another Super Bowl championship because the Colts, who we barely beat, and they didn't have Marvin Harrison, is like. You know, they're just sitting out there in the middle of the country. Nobody's even watching them. The whole league is trying to basically break down the Patriots' offense every week, and nobody's looking at them. So if the Colts, yeah, you watch. And then if the Colts do win on ESPN, they're going to act like it's the most unbelievable thing that ever happened. <laughs> right. how, many, how many have they won Super Bowls? Three. See, this may, one thing you got to say, this may help the Patriots, 
because every time, like, it's to them, the playoffs got to be boring. It's like, we're here again. Brady's the best quarterback in the league. I mean, it's like they're, they're the best team in football. Yeah. So it's like, all right, where's the challenge? Every year we do this. So now there's an added challenge. Like, let's see, like, the going undefeated thing adds, like, an extra element to, like, focus on as opposed to just being blase about being in the playoffs again. So yeah. It actually could work for them now, where instead of being, like, overconfident or cocky about, eh, we can't lose, they have to focus more because they don't want to lose. I just think these last two weeks watching how up the Eagles got and the Ravens got, I mean, the Ravens, I mean, they're, they're, they're not, there's no way they're going to make the playoffs. It's like the mm -hmm. first tackle of the game. They're just, you know, pogo stick jumping up and down. <laughs> you tackled them! Woo! <laughs> and people just hanging out yeah. of the bleachers. These just... games that should be who gives a cra who give a yeah. crap uh, are becoming yeah, like you said, playoff atmosphere. And literally, they go into commercial. It's like three to nothing. Ten yeah. minutes into uh, Ravens, ten minutes into the first quarter, and like Kornheiser's going, "That's not a typo, folks." And it's like, dude, didn't, <laughs> it's like didn't Brian Billick just coach a team to to a Super Bowl? He's been there. You got Ray Lewis. It's three to nothing. Right. It's re it's not that big a deal. Everybody, does, take it down a few. <laughs> now, does Belichick sit uh, Brady to uh, rest him up for the playoffs? That's what I'm saying. If we lose a game, that's what's going to be the well, better thing. But, then we can chill. And Belich no, I understand that. But now, as they keep winning, what is no, they're not going to pull him if they're winning. What does Belichick no do? Because you know, they no, you go got you got to go for it. Undefeated you, you, season. You can't do that to to your players. I think that he right. has to. Do, do you it. sit him the last game of the season and they're fifteen and zero? Just to rest them for the playoffs. Do you sit them when they're fourteen and zero? No, because you'll have a bye week with the playoffs. You guarantee they're going to have the bye week. So. Yeah, yeah, but no. but it's more about them worried right. if he's going to get injured. They might. What do you do as a coach? Seriously, this is a tough situation because they don't need to win anymore. They they won the division. Yeah, you they know could pretty mean? much and, and, they could pretty much ship Brady off to Hawaii and go. Hey, enjoy the next month. We'll uh, you know come on back in time for the playoffs. Yeah, I'm just saying. Like, if the Patriots lose, it's it's not going to be any. They they're going and ESPN because they're so great at hyping stuff, over hyping stuff. They they're going to act like the Hindenburg went down. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, the humanity! <laughs> they're still going to make the playoffs. This is unbelievable. Jimmy's Who would ever thought? Jimmy's Cowboys have a shot. Jimmy's a big Cowboys fan. Yeah, but yeah, I, they I don't look... think they have a shot at beating the Patriots. Someone was talking about how they think the Cowboys are going to beat them in the Super Bowl, but I don't see that. They and were the first team to expose the weaknesses that we have on our defense. And then the Colts, we saw what they did. They didn't have Marvin Harrison. So I'm just saying, it's like, okay, as a fan, I'm like, dude, you know, I'm talking trash. We're going to kill you every week. But obviously, as a football fan, you're watching. There's like, there's no way. If you got the whole league looking at you, and they also went on that Sherman's March in the beginning <laughs> of, you know, just raping teams that, you know, it, it gets after a while. They're professionals. They're like, all right, you're not going to score 50 on me. And you start seeing the guys, you know, throwing blocks down by the knees. Yeah. It's, it's, it could backfire, is well, all I'm saying. I'll tell you one thing. The reason that the Cowboys kind of exposed their defense in a way is because uh, their offense was on the field the whole time scoring on Dallas. I mean, that was a disgustingly high-scoring game. So yeah. it's not like... Uh, yeah, but they kept, kept lost it. No, no, they kept coming back. But uh, Romo's in his uh, his young Brett Favre years, where he's throwing into like triple coverage all the time. So once he stops doing that, that guy is uh, he's going to be even better. Well, so. he had a terrible playoff last year, which Aikman I think did his first one too. I found that encouraging. Like Aik Aikman's first playoff was a disaster, I believe. You got the Jessica Simpson factor though, too. So. Yeah, of course. Smell yeah. my fingers, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, that's uh, what I would be saying in the huddle. Okay, we're going to run a post, too. Come yeah. on, man. What's it like? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's it like when you're on top of her? Are you thinking, like, this is that chick from that song that I hated? <laughs> <laughs> you ever try to hold out by just thinking of her awful movies? Yeah. You think he has to kind of, like, uh, listen to her music now on his iPod as he's getting ready for the big game? Oh, yeah, and act like uh, he always liked it. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, just listen to her latest crap. It's great stuff. Dude, huh? that's a great contest. Actually, name a Jessica Simpson song. I couldn't. Oh, is this it? What is one? Is this a Christmas song? Ah, oh. celebrate! Yeah, what the hell is this? This is a popular Jessica Simpson song. He rock. Oh my God! Anyone? It does sound like celebrate. Yeah. It, sounds it, sounds like, it sounds like old Madonna. E rock, is this off your iPod? She's doing an early Madonna ripoff. Ooh. <laughs> no clue. That's because you're too, Steve? you're too busy rubbing one out when you're watching the video to actually remember the song. I'm just waiting for the hook. What's the hook? This is the hook? Oh. Nice. 
Ugh. That's nice. No, you yeah. don't like it. Shut up. This is the type of thing that, like, soccer moms with, like, really short haircuts will kind of clap their hands to at a wedding and walk around. All I right. think it's Thank timeless since the kind of thing <laughs> Jimmy Page is going to re—he's going to remaster it in like <laughs> seven years. Hey, uh, the mall shooting. I know, Anthony. Another one. Your your friends there with the assault rifles. You uh, see what happens with you people with your guns. <laughs> guns. Uh, first of all, I don't know what this guy was carrying. They said uh, it was something something assault rifle. Assault rifle. First of all, that's uh, uh, just semantics. There's no such thing. How does it's it an kid, assault yeah, rifle? What is, what, is there is there a feel good rifle that they have out there? An assault rifle, yeah. An assault rifle they classify as an assault rifle because of what it looks like, not because of anything else it does. You can buy a semi automatic rifle that is not an assault rifle that fires just as quickly uh, and just as accurately as what they call assault rifles. It's things like the um, muzzle, comes, comes the, the flash boots. suppressor. Uh, it just looks like an army gun, so they call it an assault rifle. But it's a semi-automatic. You're not you're not rock and roll in full automatic. It's illegal. You cannot own a machine gun. How many do you own behind that false wall in your den? Oh, I got I got I got a few. Don't even ask, Bill. I got a few. He's in the middle of uh, getting his video uh, podcast. Together. I got it on my iPhone, but I I got to uh, the file was too big. I I rambled on for twenty minutes about guns in about his house. Uh, home. No, about home invasions. Guns in your house, basically. Uh, no, it was about it was, home it was an invasions. opportunity for you to show off your firepower. How stupid is that? You know what, what you're doing? You're doing the same thing that guy from Beretta did. What? Like when he was on the Tonight Show like 25 years ago, and yeah, I could kill somebody. Sometimes I feel like I could kill somebody. And then he actually goes out and kills somebody. <laughs> oh, and then no. they use that as evidence. <laughs> Who, Robert Blake? Yeah, that's oh, going to be evidence no, one day. No, I never You're... said that. What I was saying, my whole, the whole gist of it is that in my own home, uh, no one's going to come breaking in. I'm not going to be the guy with the phone cord around my neck looking around going, oh, my God. Why didn't I think about, you know, what I should have done in this situation as he's watching his family and himself being ravaged? Uh, you know, and I, and I mentioned how no matter how anti-gun you are, the second someone's choking you out and you're watching your daughter being raped, uh, you want a gun. At that point, I don't care how liberal-minded, how <laughs> anti-gun you are, when you're watching criminals raping your family and, and beating the crap out of you, the only thing you want in your hand right then and there is a gun to shoot and kill those people with. That's it. Mm -hmm. No, uh, do you have a license to carry? Uh, I don't discuss that because I wanted to know, like we know when they, they're sitting there talking about this shooting spree, it said uh, terrified bargain hunters, their kids cowered inside store dressing rooms or duck behind clothing racks while others ran screaming for their lives. Now, <laughs> who do you think you would be? Would you be the more? I'm going to duck behind a clothing rack. I'm going to hide behind this flannel shirt. Or would you be someone who was going to take off? Or would you have uh, your little assault pistol? I I, the, I I tell you, the best thing to do is to uh, quickly identify where it's coming from and take a effing cover. And just, uh, you're not going to, well, you're going to be a hero. You so shot. Run, but running is, is, a, is a, a... Running's, as a last resort... Uh, if you see the guy, you know, pointing the gun at you, yeah, run, <laughs> serpentine. But <laughs> but the uh, he he was apparently on the third floor of a three floor mall that has the open mall area. So he had the high ground there, and he was shooting down on people. So uh, it's a tough situation if you're in his sights. I played out that scenario uh, on Grand Theft Auto. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. I know. You've been in the mall. You're going to Grand the mall Theft Auto. Yeah. And just have a field day. It's easy because uh, if you get uh, knocked out, yeah, you, you just hit reset and you're back in. <laughs> just <laughs> unfortunately in life, uh, that doesn't really happen. <laughs> you got to, yeah, you got to hide. I would be hiding guy. You got, yeah, you got it, you got hiding it. Guy. But, I'd be but hiding, guy. hiding guy doesn't always work, especially in those office situations. The worst stories are the ones that go, and I saw the boss run into his office and hide under the desk. And then the guy kicks the door open. You uh, just hear pow, pow, pow. I always wonder what would happen if I egged the guy on. Like if I knew I was about to get shot, I'm like, come on, man. Go out, let's go kill some. Like if I tried to join him. Oh, join him at that, him. that final moment. As, <laughs> as self preservation. <laughs> yeah, come on, Jimmy. Yeah. Just like, I've been waiting my whole life for this yeah. moment. Moment. Let's go. You got oh, a gun? We got one for me. You're, you're going to step off and just be like, I like what you're doing, man. Yeah, good boy. I'm liking this. Yeah, and just somehow. <laughs> you right. got to be like Hans Gruber. No, God, you're the one of them. No, don't shoot me. Like, and then when he gives you the gun, 
you uh, pull the trigger, but it's empty. Like, would he allow <laughs> you to do that, or would he just say shut no. up and pop you? He'd shoot you. You don't know that. Wouldn't That's even, a... they wouldn't even, he's probably just hearing wah, wah in his yeah. head, wing, the ring of, of his own gunshots. Right. You know, I hate to say it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, predict the future though, because I'm looking at it right now on YouTube. Grand Theft yeah. Auto Vice City Mission Number Nine Mall Shootout. Yeah, it's right there. They're gonna sh be showing this on the news today. You think? They say Look, that. I violent just, video games. Look, I just gave the local news because they all listen to us. There's your little angle today. Yeah, go enjoy Grand Theft Auto. Find the freaking mall oh, shootout no, scene. Don't because GTA Four. There's some fun. new screenshots up today. There's your angle. GTA Four. Run with it, you bastard. Looks amazing. Game's gonna be great. Is this, the, is this the one on the? This is a Vice City Mall shootout. You just go in the mall. There's a new one on that looks amazing, though. And, and the, the Grand Theft Auto, I think they pretty much uh, mock the fact that uh, mall security guys don't have much uh, firepower, and you could go in there and just have a field day. Walkie-talkie, they throw it at your head. But this never Good happens, though. You don't want snipers in the mall. No, it's, National it's, Guard. it's yeah. just one, it just doesn't happen. They right? do have these isolated incidents of these uh, lunatics that decide to do things. Hey, but uh, you know, it shouldn't affect you. Hey, uh, thank you, Stan. This is a great segue, actually. This week, uh, the week's fear monger comes in the shape of U.S. prosecutor Kim Worthy, who has just published her list of 10 games for parents to boycott over Christmas. You should not uh, buy your kid Hitman Blood Money. Why? <laughs> That's number 10. Self proclaimed most violent game of a series. This game glamorizes killing. So uh, you should not buy that for your child this Christmas. No. Uh, God of War. You should not get that one for your kids. Kill your parents. A sea. Your parents. It's described as a sea of unrelenting violence. Uh, you shouldn't buy your kid Resident Evil 4 this Christmas. Why? Parents aren't this stupid, though. I think, don't you think in general parents uh, understand what their kid could handle? No? Yeah. I don't have a kid. No, I, th I, I think that they need to police us and parent all of us. Yeah. To know what we can and can't. Also, yeah. uh, on this uh, list, 10 games to avoid this Christmas, you got Killer 7. I haven't heard of Killer 7. Have you, Ant? You're a big gamer. Killer 7. No, no. It's anime. Adult game. It's anime? Oh, it's anime? Stop it. Yeah, it's like seriously stop it. stylized. Not play anime that. Kind of thing. Or play anime. What is anime? Oh, yeah. All I know about is anime porno. Ooh. Where they're all yeah. dressed like little Catholic yeah. schoolgirls. Yeah. The Japanese uh, animation. How did I miss really, this? The Japanese animation usually. Like you know, the ones with the big eyeballs oh, and yeah. stuff. And what? The G Force. Yeah. The Experienced right. adult gamers call this the most violent and twisted game ever played. This Killer 7. Uh, another game you should avoid is The Godfather. You played The Godfather, no way? Yeah, good game. It is a good game, right? Liked it. So basically, it's saying avoid every cool game out there. Yeah, yeah. that's what they're, it comes down games to. Games to buy, tic tac toe. They're all rated what? They're all rated M for mature. Mature, anyway. so kids aren't supposed to be playing them. They do anyway, but I would suggest you just get uh, those baby games that uh, are out for things like Wii, yeah, the Wii. The Wii. Yeah, you know, Than knows about the Wii. Yeah, how about you do a little bowling? A little Wii bowling. Some bowling or baseball. It's safe, safe games, uh, the Wii. That's why the Wii is outsold uh, other gaming platforms. Right. Because uh, parents know they could buy it for the kids. There you go. All ages, really. Uh, number five uh, well, is kids. the video game. <laughs> kids of all ages. <laughs> a video game based, uh, of course, on the movie 300. It's called 300. It invites game uh, room gladiators to slice their way through the Persian army. Number four on the list is 50 Cent, Bulletproof. Rapper 50 Cent is involved in a web of corruption, double crosses, and shady deals that lead him on a bloody path through New York's uh, drug underworld. And what's the game about? <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't! I did! Uh, number three is Scarface. <laughs> You've played Scarface, no? No, I haven't played that one. No. Um it was, was it was it any good? It's just like it's a Grand Theft Auto. Game. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them they try to make uh, Grand Theft Auto. That's the one uh, Pacino does the voice, right? No, they had a sound alike. They had a sound alike because for some reason he wasn't in The Godfather. They couldn't even use his image yeah. for the character Michael in The Godfather. Everyone else looked like their character. But when you played the game The Godfather, the Michael character looked nothing like Pacino, sounded nothing like Pacino. Why? Because they said that Pacino was going to do Scarface. They got the his likeness video game. In Scarface. Oh, they got his likeness? Okay, then that, that must be why. Yeah. But he didn't do the... Because he can't sound like Michael anymore. No. Hey, I'm going to go out and hit them all! <laughs> right. That's not Michael anymore. <laughs> that's a great... Pick, it's man. not... It's it's. But that's just the awful <laughs> now Pacino. Yeah. What, a couple more lines. That's I'm sorry, Kay. I'm not going to tell you about my business! <laughs> What? What, what happened to his voice? He was like a soft-spoken guy for a while. He said, no, I, I think we could go in there and 
You know, take he's a dirty cop, a cop that is involved with drugs. Cop involved with drugs. <laughs> the hell is that? What happened to him? I noticed it first in Sea of Love. I think it's from all the smoking and all the scream takes he's had to do, like an injustice for all. Effed up his voice. All these but he ne- the but he you watch The takes. Godfather, it's a different voice coming out of that guy. He damaged his voice by screaming. Abalonia, no! <laughs> no, I think, I, think, I think once you get, once you establish yourself as a legend, by the third legendary film, no one could be, hey, Al, can you take it down a few minutes? Ah, uh, yeah. So you just can go, I think Denzel is like that right now. Whenever oh, really? Denzel doesn't know what to do in a scene, he has some cup of liquid that he can slap off the table. <laughs> <laughs> and I've noticed, if you, if, if, dude, if you watch American Gangster, he, he's, he's, he did it like three times. <laughs> he did, he's getting interrogated, and he just, and he just knocks this coffee off. <laughs> and then he has another one, he dumps a pitcher, he, he slaps a glass of wine out of somebody's hand and then like dumps the water over his head. He just went crazy in this last one. <laughs> That's, that's, that's his new tick. Oh, that's funny. All right, so you got Scarface on this list. Uh, th- this this politician, she writes, uh, speaking to the Detroit News about the extreme content of some of today's biggest selling games and franchises, Worthy said, there's no way that anyone can convince me that the horribleness and gruesomeness of the crimes that we've been seeing is not somehow a result, at least in part, of the violent video game culture it's not shut up shut the f up just do just look at the stats you know how many people play violent video games why is it an epidemic of violent crimes did she forget that people in this country were lynching blacks in the 40s and 50s? <laughs> yeah what video game was that like the, the and where can i get it people <laughs> but how awful people have been behaving exactly. for centuries it's like it's of not course new. yeah back in the day rather than you know playing like like uh PlayStation, you just looked out the prairie and saw the genocide as they, as they yeah. eliminated all the Indians. You right, know right. I mean? yeah. Those people just... seemed to turn out all right. They were flying kites and inventing yoga. Oh, is there a, a stat out there? I need to find a stat. How many people play what would be deemed violent video games? They Seriously. 13%. <laughs> cool. I love how Jimmy does that. He's acting. He just blurts out a statistic. We used to fall for that, and now we just. I know it's like, oh, thirteen. Okay, so thirteen percent. Wait a minute, giggling. Jimmy's lying. No, right. I'm, not, I'm not acting though. <laughs> if I was acting, if, if I was acting, go ahead, just say what you said. You like to know percentage? Yeah, I would like to know. Uh, no, well, yeah, the percentage of people that play violent video. Thirteen percent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, let's finish up this list before we go to break. Number two uh, on this list of ten games to avoid this Christmas, as far as buying these for the the children. Yeah. Is uh, Manhunt. Manhunt, uh, they had to tame down, what was that, Manhunt 2? I guess they had to tame that one down. We saw Manhunt, right? That was the movie they, uh... That was yeah. the game the they brought up, yeah, Rockstar. Rip out people's eyeballs with pliers, like how is that even a... Why would you buy that for a kid? Yeah. It's definitely... There are games that are just made for adults, and I don't think these politicians that are adults realize that adults play the games. They think it's like this weird, uh... uh you're you're in your basement if you're if you're an adult playing a video game you're in the basement you live at your parents house no one's buying these things they can't understand that people enjoy it it's like uh taking part in a a, a live action movie that you control some of the action of it's not like you're going to play it and then just bolt out your door and start it, firing it also people. relieves stress from uh, living this crappy uh, life that we have to I don't live. even see it as that it's just I, fun to I play s- like anything else that's I, fun to do I relieve game. stress by playing video games absolutely do you yes well I, yeah they don't understand that the kids who are playing Pac-Man and Asteroids are now 40 and 50 years old <laughs> yeah so yeah. right <laughs> It's actually a way for parents to get closer with their kids. <laughs> exactly. Go on there and pretend to kill people. I remember. Something I've mentioned many times. I, I My nephew, he's now, uh, uh, you know, in Gainesville there. He's pre-med. He's a huge Gators uh, fan, right? He uh, he was exposed to R-rated movies at a very young age because my sister and her husband just felt like he could handle this stuff. Okay? Yeah. But they also supervised. But he was watching R-rated movies when he was six, seven, eight years old. And, <laughs> and he was playing the violent video games as a kid. He's pre-med. He's got over a 4.0. And, and he's completely fine. My parents... you, you got to understand what your, your kid could handle. Yeah, really. some kids can comes... handle it. So I'll, I'll openly admit, yeah, some kids, maybe they can handle the, vi- uh, the violence in the, uh, the R-rated movies and stuff like that. Sure. But uh, my example, my sister, I mean, the kid is completely normal. Let's wait till he's a doctor, though, and he's injecting people with cleaning fluid. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's smothering old people. <laughs> 
He's, I mean, he's rocking down there in Florida. The kid is uh, amazing. And I remember going down to Florida, and we're watching like we're watching Scarface and all these crazy movies. And he's sitting on the couch enjoying uh, some ice cream and popcorn right alongside us. I remember mean, one of the first rated R movies I saw, other than Stripes, was Scarface. And before that, at that point, we'd only seen like Full of Love of Benji. And oh God! And Herbie goes to Monte Carlo. <laughs> and so, dude, that chainsaw scene really messed me up as a kid to watch that. Oh, yeah. But I never thought I'm going to go to school and go do that to somebody. Yeah. You know, so I don't like. Hey. Yeah, they really think like I, I could have played that game with the pliers, getting ripped somebody's eyes out when I was seven, eight years old. I would never think oh, I'm going to do that to yeah. my brother. Yeah, it wasn't going to well, uh, screw you off. To speaking the of that, doing that, we got to take Frank's call from Jersey. Frank, go ahead. Uh, I played a lot of Pac-Man in the 80s, and I'm kind of overweight now. I'm thinking about suing. Yeah, you were influenced by all that overeating that uh, the Pac-Man character does, right? <laughs> I developed an appetite for ghosts. I'm about 15 pounds overweight. I'm suing. Thanks for calling Evening at the Improv bit. <laughs> <laughs> but he's just a caller. He probably works two jobs, know, Jimmy. He he's just trying to get his moment on a radio show. <laughs> I apologize, show. Frank. <laughs> you do as many dot-eating jokes as you want. I play play does it at work all the time. I play Pac-Man a lot. Get out of the way. I might run in circles and eat dots. <laughs> <laughs> Raise this up as they all land. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> hey, don't walk over that manhole. You're going to turn blue. I'm going to eat you. <laughs> this guy's crazy. And <laughs> number one on the list, of course, the granddaddy of violence is still Grand Theft Auto. Yep. Allows players to act out crimes and rewards players for doing so. A I game, used, a used game to... that we are involved with and might be involved with in the near future. You never know. We love <laughs> yeah. Grand Theft Auto. We love Rockstar games. Sorry to interrupt you. On the TV right now, they're showing a doc. Like they're showing uh, the uh, John Mayer. There it is. And, and oh my God, the young John Mayer guy that no, shot it, at the ball. It, it's Flea with long hair. They're showing the graphic of like the uh, the mall, but it was just basically a. Uh, a drawing of like the third and second floor separated, and they had like uh, the atrium hot, like a big rectangle for the atrium, and they were just showing the trail of the bullets going. It's, it's the worst, yeah, piece of uh, exploitive graphic. There, there, there's this gun right there. That looks more like a Winchester. Oh, it is. Look at that. Yes. Wait a minute. It's a lever action. Yeah, bolt action. Holds ten to twelve rounds. Cost under two hundred. It's an bus. SKS. SKS semi. He had two uh, two magazines taken. But they're out. showing. Uh, they say semi-automatic, but then they show a lever action graphic on the bottom. It's not it. All right. Hey, let's. Oh yeah, that's an SKS. Hey, yeah. We got We got to uh, grab a break here, but really fast. Seth, he's on his way to school. Seth, he's twelve years old. What's up, Seth? Yeah. Um. I I do love Grand Theft Auto, and I watch so many violent shows and play so many violent video games. I've beat all the Grand Theft Auto games. Beat the Godfather. Haven't played Scarface well, and yet I don't want to kill anybody. I also play Rumble Roses Triple X, but that's a different story. Um, that's just the women beating each other senseless. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I'm serious. Like it, it, it's, it's like Raw, SmackDown versus Raw, but you're women and you beat each other senseless. And my favorite character is the Flying Moo Cow. Oh, yeah? Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, I want my Islanders tickets. Uh, Opie? <laughs> I'm not taking to... Do I have to take you to an Islanders game now? Young Seth would like to uh, join you at an Islanders game. You can make up uh, the bad karma that you uh, gathered when you you uh, left that other young boy out in the cold. What was his name? Gary. Uh, Gary. Young Gary. What, what did he do? There was a kid uh, when we were at NEW uh, named Gary. 12-year-old Gary? Was he 12? Yes, he's 38 yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Opie said he would take him to an Islanders game, and he never did. He never did. The kid's oh. probably in college now. Yeah. And now uh, we get Seth, who wants to go to an Islander game with Opie. That would kind of be cool, you know? This reminds me, I just saw Bill, I don't know if you want to talk about it on yeah. the air because it's your bit, but I saw Bill uh, recently taping uh, his DVD, and he talks about like hanging out with kids and stuff, and how you, this day and age you don't. Yeah, that's the first. You don't want to oh, be. Yeah, a, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be an Islander, at funny. an Islander game with a twelve-year-old. <laughs> In this day and age, it, it could mean just nothing but trouble. But it's like uh, you know, it's it's a radio guy. Uh, Seth listens, and Mark it's Parento. A, it's Mark Parento, <laughs> and and he just he wants to go to the game. You know something? They so all they talk about is sexual predators. Now, the second you said 
this kid wanted to go to a game with you, I immediately thought, oh, that's kind of weird. That's going to be a weird social But in situation. the old days, it was just like, hey, son, we'll go to the game. Yeah, exactly. And if that kid ever fell down, you'd have to comfort him from a distance as he's crying. <laughs> you'd have to have like a stick with like a tissue on the end of it, <laughs> like, trying to wipe yeah, his tears can. away. Just so there's no any sort of question of what you did. Yeah, because everyone has cell phones, too, because all of a sudden there's a picture of you like holding the young fella, yeah. trying to comfort him, and now they twist it into something yeah, else. you're checking for industry uh, injuries and you end up looking like that guy from Russia who kissed that kid on the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Putin. Yeah. I can tell yeah, if I was your uh, business manager, I would yeah. advise against a stick with a tissue on yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got us all paranoid like uh, after seeing you, I was in the elevator going up uh, to my apartment. There's a there's a mom and a kid in the elevator. I'm moving so far away from the kid. Oh yeah. You just get immediately paranoid. To be around strange kids. That's what I don't in like any either. any social situation. I will not be uh, alone in a bathroom with a little kid. No. Like, if anyway, I'm in there and a little kid's in there, I walk right the hell out. Because I don't know what he, he touched me. Wait a minute. I didn't do anything. This is slapping the cuffs on you. <laughs> Mid-urination. You'd, you'd rather get arrested for peeing in public yeah. than actually be alone in a bathroom. Exactly. I can't even go out and give my anonymous horsey rides anymore. Do you know how frustrating? <laughs> I used to give, I would do is we go for rides and I would just give little horsey rides and drop the person off. Innocent? Yeah. All right. Burr. We got to say goodbye to Seth. We got to take a break. We're real late. Uh, Bill Burr at Caroline's all weekend long starting tonight. Yep. 212 757 4100 is the number. And David Tell is going to be on the show in a few minutes here. Good. We haven't had him on in years, man. We'll talk to Dave in a few minutes. Well, he's actually here to talk about my New Year's Eve show oh, boy. at the North Fork Theater. <laughs> oh. I heard about it. What uh, city is that in? It's the Westbury uh, Music Fair on Long Island. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah. And what, what's the date? Oh, New Year's Eve. Oh, okay. Um, wait a minute. A huge unit is uh, saying it would be very funny if uh, Lindsay uh, pulled the same gag with little Seth and made you hold his hand as you're walking <laughs> oh, out wow. of the... Uh... <laughs> <Can't imagine. laughs> All of a sudden, Obi's walking out and they switch hands and you're holding hands with a young 12-year-old boy. <laughs> you heard Big that. grin on your face. <laughs> you heard that story, right? No. Uh, that was a good one. Maybe after the break. I'll okay. tell it again. Okay. It's Opie and Anthony. You're checking out the Opie and Anthony show featuring Bill Burr, who's going to be at Caroline's all weekend long. Uh, we have J.C. from New Jersey. I think he's another 12-year-old calling the Opie and Anthony show. J.C., what's up? Adorable. Hey, guys. What's up? Hey, man. Hey, man. Uh, Anthony, do you want to go to the uh, Harrisburg gun show with me? The gun show? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Why not? Let's go to the gun show. Hey, this could be a kind of a cool bit. I'll take a 12-year-old to an Islander game. You take mm -hmm. a 12-year-old to, like, a gun show. And Jimmy could take a 12-year-old to a... A peep show? <laughs> Go around the... <laughs> just drive him around downtown. <laughs> show him the sights? I don't know. Maybe I'll take the little lad to see Ozzy at the end of December here in the garden. Oh! Hey, there you go. Yeah, what is your hobby? Maybe an Ozzy? Maybe a, a rock concert? I, 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 yeah, of course. Because yeah. people know I love my hockey, so that's an easy one for me. And Ant loves his gun. Do you go shooting there, J.C.? Uh, yes, I am. Yeah, <laughs> sound like the pilot in an airplane. What's, what's <laughs> you like shooting there, Jay Z? What's uh, what's your weapon of choice? You like gladiator movies? Was that the one? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Peter oh. Graves. Uh -huh. All right. Well. <laughs> He's a little flustered. Are you a little nervous? Don't worry. There's only about a million people listening to you. Is that yeah. your phone? Yeah, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Um, my favorite is I own a 22. My dad gave it to me, but uh, he is a Springfield. Yeah, that's great, uh, great, great weapon to start off with as a child. The twenty-two. Ah, uh, my father gave me one of those too. What's a twenty-two? I, I'm, twenty-two I'm caliber. Dumb. It's a little, you know. Is that just a little pop, pop? Yeah, little pink, pink, little small game. You do a little hunting. You, you can barely kill a squirrel with shoot it. a little squirrel or a strikes bunny fear. rabbit. Huh? Strikes fear and rodents of and, America. Yes, rodents. but it's a little rabbit. You shoot little rabbits with it and stuff. You know, learn how to kill early. How many times? Do, how many uh, bullets do you got to pump into a rabbit with a twenty-two before it finally goes down? Well, uh, let me tell you, my father, my father thought it was uh, eighteen sixty when uh, uh, I was living out there, and he he was always into this um, man training thing, kind of you know, man me up a little because I was such a little crybaby, and uh, he he gave me a twenty-two uh, rifle, and then. Uh, said, all right, go out camping. I'm giving you one. Um, you're getting nothing to eat and one bullet. 
Here you go. And now you got to go out and get your, get your dinner. And he left you? Shot yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been hysterical. He shows up. I'm just dead. I shot myself. With your jaw askew. <laughs> Dude, your dad would be on trial, and that, that, that would have been on the cover of the post. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was a different time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had to go out and uh, shoot a, a rabbit. I had one bullet. Did you get him? And, uh, well, I cheated. <laughs> I grabbed a handful <laughs> of uh, 22 uh, bullets and put them in my pocket oh. before the... Um, How many did it you take? Know. So you dragged... I, the took about, I took about 10 more, and it took, uh, it took a couple of shots, you know. Uh, first of all, it was getting dark. I'm there with a flashlight and a 22, and I see a little bunny eyes, you know? So I go to aim for him, and I missed. And, and I got one I hit in the side and lost him. How them. did you find a rabbit? That's what you know how They're old, all over the how place. How old you are. Yeah, back then there were. <laughs> it was California. Before it's a, global war, man. Southern California. California. All you do is walk into the woods with a, with a right. gun and a flashlight, and I see bunny rabbit eyes. How does that happen? <laughs> yeah, back then there were, only, there were only 46 states. It was a different time, man. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a... Sorry, Bill. Let me tell you about a band named N Nirvana one of these days. Good Lord. Oh, sorry, you young kids. <laughs> there was rabbits. There was California. You still go out at night. And there... What happened the first time you missed? You hit a mastodon? <laughs> <laughs> Stepped in the way you shot? I get it. Exaggeration humor. <laughs> I was going to go with elk, and I was like, hey, you know, ah, this, Mastodon this, is you know. funny. Why didn't you have your slave going to get the rabbit? <laughs> Anthony's father was obsessed with giving him, like, manly tasks. Man to do. train. It was all, all these right. manly You're tasks. You're going to go in the woods with That's one it. bullet, and don't come home until you bring me a dead rabbit. Bring me a rabbit. And then uh, he got me for, I think it was my 14th birthday or something, he got me a, a pistol. And uh, I already had, like, a great rifle. Uh, it was, uh, like, modeled after a Winchester. And he goes, well, if I had just gotten a brand-new pistol, I'd saddle my horse up and go riding and go shooting. He goes, Br bring me back something. I go, All right. So I went up there and uh, bagged me a snake, a rattler. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, I was shooting at this nice. thing like crazy. I, I must have, he, he, and then I bring back a rattlesnake. Why didn't you hit him with your flashlight? I should have just beat him over the head with the <laughs> flashlight. Uh, but I felt really kind of good about it because the horse freaked out a little bit uh, because they don't like snakes. So I'm on top of the horse trying to shoot this snake and, and blam, 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 blam. I'm reloading. I'm pulling out the rifle. I'm shooting. So I go down and I go, hey, dad, look, I got a rattlesnake. He goes, Jesus Christ, you should have come back with 50 of them for all the rounds I heard you go through. <laughs> I'm like, I, I bet he gets on no, the phone with your, with his ex-wife. No, please in this guy. <laughs> What's what the hell, Ro? The kid can't even shoot straight. You didn't give him a gun, Joey, did you? Gotta give him a gun. He's got a man up. You're raising a fruit, Ro. <laughs> You're raising a fruit. You got oh, your... stop crying! Don't fight! <laughs> stop crying! Oh, you stop crying. That's what he would tell me. Yeah. Every time. You got on a horse and yeah. went out and shot a rattlesnake. Where were you living? It was um, it was in Southern California, like Orange County, but it was in the hills. It was uh, when? <laughs> when it was probably 1976. No, this is like Dogtown and Z Boy days. <laughs> yeah, you it sound was... like you grew up on like the Ponderosa. It was it was because there was a uh, the the riverbed that we used to ride in the sometimes. The riverbed. The riverbed. <laughs> Good lord! It had um, in Yellowstone. No, it was like the flood. Of mice and men were. <laughs> it was <laughs> like the flood control. It was in um... Dead Man's Creek. <laughs> <laughs> was there a hollowed out skull of no, a bull? No, it had cement <laughs> size. It was like a, those things there you see go. the Terminator um, uh, riding through on his motorcycle, you know? It's got the concrete. They're always in, uh, in California. Just a cactus to get some liquid. <laughs> yeah, I've done that. Wanted dead or alive. See, when we were in the Mojave Desert, yeah. uh, I, I learned how to get water out of cactus and uh, did that. Yeah, I made a big hole. And then I, f I filled up the hole with cactus and then put plastic over the top. And uh, uh, Why do I picture you whimpering through all of these It was. It was just all, <laughs> I want to do this. You're basically <laughs> saying Man vs. Wild ripped you off. Hoo -hoo. Exactly. What happens with the cactus? Uh, you get water out of it. How? 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 So you dig a hole, and then you line the hole with slices of cactus. And then you put a cup in the middle of that. And then you cover the top of the hole with plastic. And then take a single little rock and put it right in the middle so it kind of makes the plastic 
in a funnel shape. And as the sun beats down on the cactus, the water evaporates from the cactus, collects on the plastic. And since the rock is in the middle of the plastic, it drips downwards and drips into the cup. Wow. And that way you have a uh, uh, liquid did. to drink. Back, back in the old days, yeah, the Indians, they take out some saran wrap. <laughs> you could, <laughs> take a you could use actually. <laughs> yeah, because that happens. I know the amount of times I've been stranded in the wild, and you know everybody has saran wrap on them. So <laughs> you son just, of a bitch, it's just, you it's just a got a crap survival. on it. Crap on it. <laughs> well, how do you do it? <laughs> you raises a good point. Yeah. What plastic? Do you use anything that kind of can collect water but not absorb it? You take out an so, empty uh, like gallon of bleach that everybody just always has on it. <laughs> <laughs> These household products you'd never have. Oh, can you use God. like a t-shirt or something? You are no, a no, it would just to absorb be, the so water. Then, that's a, it, then that's just yeah. dumb. What if you, you only know. had bounty towels? <laughs> <laughs> you could squeeze them into your mouth. Hey, uh, <laughs> we're going to go back to what Bill was talking about because yeah. this brings up uh, a Bill Burr story. Brandon and Boston and listening on BCM. What's up? Hey, boys. Hey. Hey, I uh, just wanted to go back to what you're talking about with the kid with the Islanders game. Uh, I was actually in a bat, like a restaurant bathroom, and uh, it was like a little girl just kind of like running around in the bathroom. Oh my and God. Uh, her dad was like, her dad was like in the stall and like totally unsupervised and a kid. So I'm like, initially, like, uh oh, that's not good. Um, so I like, I waited like a minute. I'm like, well, yeah, forget it. I just got to, you know, I got to get in there, get out. So uh, I started going over to the, the the urinal to go to the bathroom, and uh, <laughs> like the like the little girl just starts coming to like walking over and like peeking into like what she probably shouldn't see for another like ten years. So I'm like, whoa, 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 no, 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 don't do that. And uh, so I'm like, I just zipped up and like ran out of there until like the dad was like, you know, until they left the bathroom because I'm like. There's no way, like, I'm getting, like, you know, in trouble for this one. Yeah, everyone's so paranoid now. Chris Hansen you know? has made everyone paranoid to hang out with kids. It's as simple as that. Bill Burr. Why don't you zip up and come out here with me? <laughs> right. What? I was just... <laughs> Bill Burr has an elevator story, and that started that whole bit that... That's uh, how I got the bit. The way how I got the bit was I was I was in my building, and uh, me and this other guy were waiting for the, the elevator. It started coming up, and I just hear this kid screaming. This little kid screaming, and the door opened up. as this little, like, five-year-old girl... With nobody else screaming, I kind of figured out, like, you know, a couple seconds that somehow she got on the elevator, the doors closed. <laughs> so, Stupid kids. And left mommy behind or whatever, Yeah, right? she was downstairs. So we walked in there. The big dude is not even addressing that the kid is even there. And I basically was, like, crouching down going, okay, what? But, like, keeping, like, I was crouched. It was yeah. weird to say. I was crouched down, like, four feet away. <laughs> So it's probably even more weird. I was just, yeah, yeah. I just like, and, and I was just in my head the whole time. I was like, I got to figure out where this kid's mom is. But in no way, shape, or form am I coming in any contact with this kid. If the kid's falling down, like maybe if I have like a pen, I'll try to catch the back of. You the even car. made too much contact there by even talking to her. Oh yeah, because exactly. the kid. Oh, well, what happened? What happened? Who was that man that I don't know, but he touched me. Yeah. Oh, and they're gonna listen to you. No, I was just helping the. Ow! Yes, ow, single, my head! It's in the cement, and your six, knee is in my neck. Single white male, late thirties, never been married. Yeah, totally yeah, fits you, the, you're profile. the profile. The profile is over. <laughs> you're, you're just trying to help the kid, and next thing you know, uh, that's you, the point getting... on here. You can't help children anymore. No, you just can't. <laughs> as Bill got tased, is he trying to explain himself? Yeah, did a little. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you oh, you, if you want to hear a good one, go on YouTube and look up uh, Skater Wuss Fight. Skater Wuss Fight? Yeah, What's yeah. that about? Is that a good one? You know what it is? It's I about the end of somebody's childhood and, and any hopes of getting laid in high school. These kids, now, I swear to God, these kids now, everybody has like that horrific, like embarrassing moment when you were a kid, and it just went away. But now it gets filmed. That's going to follow the dude to, to uh, college. Somebody throws a skateboard at him, and the way this kid cries... Really? He sounds like a, like an ambulance. <laughs> the wham wham. Yeah. Oh, wham, wham. Wham. I can't get it's it here. Like, you got to go to Iraq. E I, even though it's a video, the audio. Can't watch YouTube. Skater was fighting. Oh. All right, we'll try to find it. But then he starts. Uh, he go. <laughs> I can't even do it. <laughs> All right, we'll go, we'll get that audio for everybody. <laughs> It's, we can't get to YouTube, so it's like... That's what I like to do. Almost, I like to have a nice discussion and bring it to a screeching halt <laughs> with, with a video that no one can find. It's all find. good. 
Uh, we lost Paul, too. That's fine. And David tells here. How about we take a break and regroup? we got to catch Very up Very good. Anyway. Hey, I want to give a quick plug to Dennis Leary's book signing tonight. We said we would. It's at Borders Pen Plaza in New York City. Tonight, 7 to 8 p.m., the whole cast of Rescue Me will be signing that book. Yeah. Because uh, he was great yesterday. So. He was awesome on the show yesterday. Yeah, a lot of fun. Want to meet the cast of Rescue Me. They're at that uh, book signing tonight. Cool. So we got David Tell, Bill Burr, playing Caroline's all weekend long. We'll find out where Dave's going to be. And uh, we'll continue. It's Opie and Anthony. Yeah, rolling right along. Opie and Anthony, full house today. We got Bill Burry's playing Caroline's all weekend long. Of course, Jim Norton's here every day doing his thing. And uh, we got David Tell on the couch, who's, uh, I think, HBO special premieres this weekend, right? Yeah, December 8th. Very, very and, cool. Hey, uh, how's it going, guys? Thanks for having me in after the pedophile uh, long <laughs> remix bit. <laughs> <laughs> were, were you guys talking about Chris Hansen? And all that? Yeah. Well, yeah. he's kind of ruined it for everybody. You can't really hang out with a kid in an innocent way anymore because uh, adults are just paranoid. Did anybody, because you guys know, like, Bill or whatever, I, who has the joke where they go, like, he, uh, Chris Hansen is the blade of uh, catching, you know, of, like, pedophilia? <laughs> you know, remember, like, uh, what's his name? Like, he's, like, half vampire, half whatever. <laughs> he, like, knows their ways, knows what they like, you know? <laughs> it's like mall rock climbing. Mm, sounds like a place for a pedophile to hang. You know, I... <laughs> yeah, he knows. But Dave, he's got to take a I serum think, like, to keep think. himself from just... Going out there and, and abusing kids himself. Yeah. You, you bring up a great point. Chris Hansen has sat on that couch a couple times. He there's, has. There's something not right about him. When you yeah. look in his eyes, you're uh, like, all right, what is this really about, Chris? He's, he's got a double side to him. And, uh, yeah. you know, I think that, uh, you know, everybody wants to be on that show. I think that's the new Byron <laughs> Allen. <laughs> you, know, you know, it was kind of flattering, sort of, for our show because uh, one of our listeners got caught in one of really? things and goes, Oh, I saw you on Opie and Anthony yeah. once. He goes, You were great on Opie and Anthony. <laughs> oh, you saw clip? me on Opie and Anthony. The management doesn't really like when we play this clip because it's not good for, the, for, for Madison the image? Avenue, but yeah, uh, for the image. it's a holiday clip. The guy actually heard Chris Hansen on our show and still got caught in one of those houses. Let's just, uh, you know, they should turn lemons into lemonade and just to have the salespeople go after Osh Gosh Bagosh. <laughs> and then Chris Hansen wants our emails one day. He's like, hey, you know, I've been on the show a couple times. Uh, how about we exchange emails? I'm like, oh boy. F no. That's one thing you don't want. I, mean, I have, I'm not hiding anything, but that's the last thing you want to do is give Chris Hansen any of your info. You know, Here's that, an email he from Greg Dot Hughes. Right. You, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I was in, uh, I was in New York going to a restaurant one time and it was like a celebrity sighting that only I think Jim and Bill, we, we would enjoy. You know the people that play the bait on that show? Like, they're like these kind of tweener-looking girls. Yeah. You know, like actresses. <laughs> they couldn't get in a high school musical or anything like that. So that's what they're doing, you know? So I, I saw one of those girls because I was watching the show, the you know, Chris Hansen show. And uh, I was like, that's that girl. She's the bait. You know, she'd be the, like the one. That, I'll be out in a minute, you know? <laughs> Put, you know, put take off your pants, and if you got a gun or a taser or a ball gag, put it on the counter. You know, <laughs> if you want to start dialing a lawyer, you know that that little like you know yeah. Pollyanna thing. So, <laughs> so dialing a lawyer. Yeah, so it's like uh, I saw her in a restaurant with the girl from Sex in the uh, City, the redhead one. You know, oh, yeah, kind uh, of butch. Yeah, what's her name? Uh, uh, Miranda uh, Nixon. Uh, what? Uh, yeah, Cynthia, Cynthia Nixon. Cynthia, yeah, Cynthia yeah. Nixon. Whatever she plays on the show, I don't know. So I went up to them. They were sitting at the table. I go, I'm a huge fan. And like Cynthia's like, mm. and I go, no. I was like, mm, uh, of you, but really of the bait of this girl. <laughs> you really recognized her? Come yeah, on. I did. And I got an autograph. And I'm like, and, uh, and I looked at what she signed. And it said like, uh, thanks for the blah, blah, blah. Stay off of my space. Wink, wink. So that's where they're, you know, they're, they're trolling. They're just joking about it. They're so That's the only hysterical. Story I, <laughs> I sent it. I sent a MySpace message to the girl who put one of the girls who plays the bait, the, the original one, and she said, "I to try to get her on the show." And she's like, "Well, you have to contact producers and stuff like that." She wouldn't just come on the show. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, that's is MySpace around here. Or? She, I forget her real name, but yeah, she's she's, yeah. she's accessible. She's I'm sure that's why you first she's cute, sent too. it. Yeah, she's really, <laughs> really cute. She's like hey, twenty. Hey, before uh, <laughs> wearing nothing but a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Before the break, uh, Bill turned us on to this uh, video, and that's what you saw as you walked in, Dave. Uh, us all laughing as you're trying to say hi to everybody. I apologize for that. But uh, on YouTube, there's a video called Wussy Skater Fight. You want to explain this again, Bill? We finally got it. Yeah, Fantastic. it's basically uh, some sort of fat kid has some sort of a whip or something, a stick. He tries to hit this little skinny kid with a skateboard. He hits him once, and then the kid just takes his skateboard. I think he hits him in his, the back of his thigh. It's yeah. like Charlie Horse area. Yeah, yeah and really the kid nails goes him. down like he's been shot with, I don't know what, and, <laughs> and lets out this wail like, I don't know, like a like a loved one just died. And he's not going to live this down is what you're uh, yeah, They're like, about, how old would you say they are? 
14, 13. 14. Yeah, maybe there. maybe around there. And and the the fat kid that winds up crying at the end whipped the kid with like a he what can only be a, called a switch back in the old days. <laughs> Go out and grab a switch. Bit of hickory. Yeah, it's a hickory. <laughs> and uh, hits him with it, and the kid just came back and throws the skateboard at him. Which you should do, right? And you would think he would just go, ah, you know, F you or something like that, but he just goes Listen. flat down and lets out a cry that only a girl would. Listen for the cry. It's quick. Hey, 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 you! Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's fantastic. it. Why does that end? That's fantastic. Who turned the uh, camera off? That was I got up and kicked him. <laughs> Yeah, he's. That's it. I want the long version of that. That's all it is. The video's eleven seconds long. I had to watch it like five times, like to even realize it wasn't fake. I'm like, there's no way he just cried. Like he's one of those kids who's already like six two, but he still hasn't hit puberty. Yeah. <laughs> you know those kids? He's, he still has all the baby fat. Yeah, and it's there he is perfect. crying on the street. One more time. <laughs> hey, add that to the Steve uh, sounds. They can mix that into some rock songs. Laughing like, stock. Like yeah. a haunted pottery barn. <laughs> uh, uh, and then people are uh, bringing up the other video of the fat kid on the log in the woods. Uh, that's another good one. What, are they shooting at him or something? Yeah, they're yeah. shooting at him with some kind of gun. I don't know, BB gun or something. They're saying that's the best crying He's video. saying, stop, <laughs> stop. He starts crying. Stop it, stop it. That's Wait. the best kid crying video ever. All these little moments that used to just happen and were gone when you were a kid. I mean, everyone knew those situations. You know, you had the kid that, that you'd, you'd smack in the head. You'd have a dirt bomb fight and someone would throw a rock. Crying. Everyone would run. They were just moments, but now, I mean, they're captured for everyone to enjoy the humor of some little kid getting hurt. <laughs> Amazing. I love it. It seems to be fat kids with friends with cameras. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, like, as long as you got a camera, few friends, and the fat kid, you're in. You're making YouTube. <laughs> it's like, hey, Tubbs, what are you up to today? <laughs> I'll bring my camera. <laughs> Want to come out to the woods? Laughs. Yeah, come on out to the woods. It's Lord of the Flies, the man. Really no sounds better than a fat boy being whipped. <laughs> really is music. It's just a bad dream, fat boy. <laughs> ow! Ow! Skateboard! Ow! <laughs> Why? Why? Where is the Sean Penn of their generation to protect? Like in Bad Boys, you know, he like sit up for that kid with the nose. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harlot. Yeah, where where Harlot. is that? Where's the Sean? Hey, that's not right. Leave, <laughs> leave Piggy <laughs> alone. Ain't Give me gonna that happen. Tape. <laughs> ain't gonna happen. <laughs> All right, hey, uh, we got a woman that's upset with her butt implants. You want to hear this? What? Mm. Just kind of throwing some stuff in oh. the old CD player here. Yeah, sure. Uh, David Tell, HBO this Sunday. Also, mm -hmm. Caroline's uh, the December 27th through 30th. Oh, first, let me clear something up with Dave, because, oh, uh, no. oh my oh, no. God. This could get a little uh, I awkward. I was, down, I was down at the put, cellar. Put down the camera. Put down the camera. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to whip me, Put down the camera. You're not going to whip me crying. like a West Virginia fat boy, are you? <laughs> Go ahead. I was down at the cellar, mm -hmm. uh, catching your set. Laughing. When? when Having a good time. Oh, this is a while ago. Okay. Yeah, a while ago. Thanks. And, I am uh, an alcoholic. I had, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so am I. Really? <laughs> yeah, why not? Okay. I uh, had a table with uh, three, three girls at the table mm -hmm. and me sitting there enjoying the set. In front of us, closer to the stage, yeah. was another table full of what I would gather you comics just call Pains in the ass. Get out of the effing club. You're yapping. You're nice you're, you're making. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you're just you're just making a very difficult time for the comic. Okay, yeah. So uh, you had turned around, mm -hmm. looked right at me, and pointed at me. Yeah. Now I had been going to comedy clubs for years. I I'm friends with a lot of comics. I know the protocol. Right. Shut the f up. Laugh at the funny parts. Don't try to be the 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 act for the night. Mm -hmm. He's up on stage. You lambasted me. I did as the guy that was making the noise, and and then I'm and I even tried much. Uh, I didn't have the mic, so I tried. I was like, no, it's not me. Shut up! <laughs> you laid you laid into me, and I was sitting there like, it's not me. I know how to act in a comedy club. I did, and then everyone's looking at me like I'm the douche. Hey, you know what? 
Yeah. I hate to be all Blackwater about it, but uh, collateral damage. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. What can I tell you? The boys will back me up here. You know, sometimes. Yeah. sometimes collateral I gotta, damage. They got, I, I, I apo- and I have to say one thing. Don't apologize. Because I saw Jim special, and when you two stood up. <laughs> it, it was amazing, wasn't in it? In the sea of seat fillers and uh, <laughs> people who were promised if you come to this, you might get on America's uh, Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> You guys are the most blendable uh, people I've ever seen. Yeah, you true. Because I know now I'm like, thinking like, yeah, I have seen you at the club. Yeah. But you like blend right in. I know. Um, I, I all but of a sudden was the a-hole. That. No, it, it actually made for a funny story. I was just, uh, I was so pissed that well, night. I'm like, saying, but I was what? helping him. I was only helping him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was I, know I was I was helping. helping the show better. <laughs> I know. He needs someone to work off of. If you could come, if... <laughs> We all have to pitch together because there's a problem, and I'm glad you guys are giving me a chance to come on here because we are inundated right now in this city with Europeans with a lot of money that's worth as much as our money. Oh, my God, and yeah. this hasn't happened since, I don't know when, maybe the 1800s or something. <laughs> there's Canadian people walking around like they have a real country. There's all these Europeans. They come down to the comedy cellar, and they just stare. They don't get it. And then you have to attack them because you, you know, it brings up your own inner, you know, self hatred. <laughs> they're, they're like kind of verifying what you already know. Yeah, <laughs> you're I don't know. are you guys running into that? <laughs> yeah, the Canadians are feeling pretty important right now. Yeah, even isn't the their mo- their money's worth more than ours at this right for the first time in a long time? Right? Yeah, yeah. Their dollars uh, worth more than ours? Yeah, a little more. And it's like, well, how did that? When did that happen? We goofed on their money for years. It's, I think it's an even. It's even, Stephen, right now. And the <sighs> shekel is coming up. <laughs> the shekel. A couple of shekels. Really- I, saw, I saw Bill Burr recently. I got to keep going back to the last time I saw you. He was taping his latest DVD. And he's killing, man. Killing. It was a big theater downtown. And remember the guy was completely asleep at your show. And you're like, what the F My is this about? My whole set, there was this guy... Like, I mean, like that, not, you know, your head yeah. wakes oh, you up. Not God. even just a little Do, tired. This guy that. was like, uh, you know. You know what I found out later? Race. He was one of the guys in the crowd. He was on something, and oh. he was freaking people out. This is going to be awesome. And, you know, by the time oh, the show shit, started, yeah. he was like passed out. So, of course, this kid's like right in the third row. So the entire time, you know, as a comedian, that's all I'm focusing on. Right, right. I'm just like, oh, this no. DVD is going to put people to sleep. They're going <laughs> to nod off. This is, te- no. I suck. I'm terrible. Dude, you, you should have had nothing to do with Bill Burr. You should have smashed him and said something like, geez, sir, am I keeping you up? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I, I was like, where you see the guy who's sleeping and he's like wearing a suit. So, you know, like he's not like trash or anything or whatever. And then uh, like later you find out it's like. Well, I'm sorry. I say, hey, dude, uh, what's the matter? Not funny, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, uh, I run a burn unit and, uh, you know, single handedly <laughs> saving house, something, lives. And you're like, oh, I'm going to be like, dude, sad. I was doing it. I used to do they used to do a, a thing at Sloan Kettering, uh, uh, the cancer uh, uh, awards here in New York. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I want to host that. Right. The winner of uh, the slowest walk to the bathroom is. Oh I was, uh, no, I was, I would go there and do these, these gigs. They would have Tuesday night, you know, to make the, to cheer the patients up. <laughs> And I was doing it one time. And you? This, yeah, I know. I Who know. was the second choice for that? <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, well, I wasn't the only one, but I was one of many. Okay. So I was performing, and this one guy was just staring at me the whole time, and I was just kept addressing how this guy hates me, and I'm bombing. So afterwards, like, he walked over, and he's like, I- I'm sorry I wasn't laughing. I'm just not feeling very well. Oh, <laughs> oh That's what I want to hear. Great. <laughs> and you patted him on the back, and he spit up blood? No, I blood. punched him in the face, and I said, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so you should have stayed in the room. <laughs> You <laughs> set wrecker. Oh, I was really felt bad. Ten minutes <laughs> set wrecker. Right. The cancer gig is the gateway to the uh, <laughs> yeah. telling kids they're adopted. Well, Chris they wouldn't Hansen. let me onto the AIDS ward until I proved myself and, <laughs> and got a tape. <laughs> That's part of your reel. I'm sad. <laughs> so you want to hear about butt implants or what? Right, let's do it. All right. And in Knoxville, Tennessee, a woman is having a hard time bending over after she had implants placed in her rear end. The woman paid $5,500 to have a more curvy figure. Sorry, that's crazy video there. However, here implants have drooped. Her implants have drooped, causing extreme pain. Now, if you need a laugh this morning, come out and look at this. Whenever she bends over, and even when she sits for an extended amount of time, now she says she wants them removed, but has lost trust in the doctor and is trying to find one that she feels could trust to do the right job. Wow. Okay. I want to see it. 
There's your news right there. Mm. I want to see the video of the chick with the... <laughs> the butt implants? Yeah, I felt them before. Like certain of Really? Hooker, yeah, yeah. Hookers certain times to have them, and they just feel like... They feel like... Uh, Wait, hookers have them. butt implants? Well, I mean, a couple of them, yeah. You can feel that there's something not right. I hooked up one time. Something not right. <laughs> you know what? I came back off the road one time. Something alien. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt... I, I still think this was a post-op tranny. And I, so we had sex, and something felt... Now, wrong. that's not a band, is it? <laughs> I always thought that was a band. Go ahead. <laughs> Post-op training, right after Sweet Charlie. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. And, uh, Sorry, uh, that's, I, I didn't really have a story to it. I just kind of felt that there was something wrong. I, I could feel like it, it didn't feel right. And uh, and then the ass, the something felt plastic about it. Uh, yeah. uh, it was in hindsight, that I realized that was oh, that's <laughs> What was she doing as you were uh, realizing she had a fake ass? Uh, helping me finish. I, mean, uh, I, I didn't stop. <laughs> so how do, how do they do? Where do they go in for that? They just go under the cheek? I don't know. Actually, there's they, the they video. Brazil a lot. Brazil a lot. video's up over there. Really? Brazil? They need it. We'll link this on onaradio.com later Ew. today. What? That looks, what is that? It's a breast implant. It looks like a like a. Oh my god! She's got a boob uh, on her oh butt. Oh my god! How do you how do you it's explain a butt that? Boob. Are you a big butted guy? I mean, do you like? Uh, I, oh. I, ah! What's oh going God. on there? That's her without her pants on. Stop. What the f is that? Oh my God! Oh my God! I'm gonna get sick. How I don't know I, what that is. How do you Rocky explain Dennis's that? Head. <laughs> Rocky Dennis's head. <laughs> Just go to uh, onaradio.com later today. We'll link what oh, we're screaming wow. at. She what looks, is that? Tupperware. How do you? What it is? It's a. It's a. Uh, how do you oh. explain that? Seriously, I can't. It looks nice. I, I can't even figure it out. Uh, Never mind. Explain it. I'm looking at it and I can't it, work out where it. What? It's a bunion. A, no. a bunion. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow, we're uh, we don't know how to explain this. It's like a bike helmet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bike helmet under yeah. her skin. There you go. It's got all my dreams oh. in there. <laughs> that is disgusting. All right, we'll get that video up later. Wow. Hey, let's say hi to Steven in Canada. That's a lawsuit. Steven. Hey, brother. What's going on? What's going on, man? What's hi. up? We got David Tell in studio today. Oh, that's cool. And many uh, others. I'm in Toronto. Now I'm in Toronto now. Yep. Um, I love you guys up here. A lot of you guys, you guys are starting to spread up here. Yep. Uh, you guys were talking about the Canadian dollar. Yep. Yeah. It's actually, it's actually kind of funny, dude, because um, if you didn't know already, all these Canadians, we're all starting to rush down to the States because the way we see it is now that our dollar is at par, everything's way cheaper down in the States. So everyone's coming down there. So it's funny. These Canadian retailers, mm -hmm. they're all scrambling to now start competing with American prices. Oh. Thank you for oh, that wow. little economics lesson. What are they buying? Bobsleds and Parkers and you know, <laughs> <laughs> snowmobiles. I don't. Know. I was I was just thinking that this show Canadians is going, are the most polite people, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. I was thinking this show was going so well that we really needed someone to like kick us in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stephen, for that interesting comment. You know what you need to do though. Go wow. well, on the internet and look up Rick Mercer's talking to Americans. I think you'll like it. Whoa. Wow. What is that about? Canadian perspective. Very challenging, Randall. Mm. All right, well. I wish we had the money to fight you on this one, but we <laughs> I'll be able to clean your house later. All right, we'll check that out. Let's say hi to Tim in Missouri. Tim, what's up? Hey, what's going on, man? I just wanted to thank uh, Dave Attell. I was in Iraq last year, and I saw him on uh, July 31st at Camp Liberty at uh, one of the MWR sites. And, you know, we were all going there. We know how sometimes when the uh, MWR and the Mil USL bring com comedians over, it was, it was like, Holy cow, this is really Dave to tell. There was no skimming down, and we really appreciate everything you did for us. Well, uh, you know, well, I don't know what to say, but that was probably the, the highlight of my uh, year, definitely, because uh, uh, going over there, you know, I, I really, I don't know, Jim, I know you, you've you been over there a couple times, but uh, you really, it's the best shows you can ever do, and uh, a great time just hanging with you guys, and it's really freaking hot over there, and I don't know how you do it. Me, me and do you yell at the soldiers for um, speaking <laughs> up during it? Yeah. Pipe down! <laughs> the Republican guards screaming yes. and he's yelling at the U.S. Troops. Enough with the howitzer, I'm trying to do comedy. <laughs> me, me and Colin did a show on the back of a flatbed truck for like 35 army guys that had just come in from a field, and they just sat there on these like picnic park benches and watched us, and they were fantastic. They are the best shows, because the crowds are really happy over there. Well, Jim, I draw when I'm over there. I'm looking at two <laughs> yeah, I sold at, it. <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, the, the best part is that like you, you do the show and then like uh, you know you jump onto something like a plane or whatever and then you're you're like moving to the next base yeah. and it's cool that you get to do get to see and you know be a part of like it's amazing. So uh, thank you very much, man, for uh, coming out and like I said, all the dudes who I saw over there, first rounds on me. If you see me in a club, so. All right. 
All right, that's there you go. All right, so everyone that just heard that, yeah, I know, just, really. Just Caroline, look at the tells calendar. Tell, figure out where he was and say you were there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you guys had the nerve to go over there because I, I would never go. It was over what, there. Really, Bill? Oh, are you kidding me? Go but over it, to a war zone? But it's, it's sad like, that you know you'll what? be playing I'll, one I'll... of us in a movie about going over there. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best looking one in the room. <laughs> I'll do. Uh, I'll I'll play a bass, like in New Jersey. <laughs> I, I I'm not gonna go over there and get my bass in Jersey. I'm not gonna go over there get my head sawed off. Those guys, you know, that's no live from Fort Monmouth. Dude, it's like yeah, I'm not. I'm not a Marine. I don't know how to shoot guns. And, you know, they, my luck, that's what's going to happen. All of a sudden, something crazy is going to happen. They protect you, though. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they do. They're they're, that around. would be like yeah. the one huge offensive where the base you're at is this huge, secure base, but it gets completely overrun. And <laughs> oh, someone yeah. Hands, yeah. hands you a rifle and just goes, dude, you got to. You have to. Yeah, and there's Bill Burr in a no foxhole one. just going, <laughs> what, what do I do? How do I get the safety off? I didn't go to basic. <laughs> then I'm on YouTube rocking slowly in the orange jumpsuit. Wouldn't that be somebody amazing? Somebody reads a manifesto that... above oh. me. No. <laughs> I'll go to any barracks here in the States. <laughs> I, I thought you were like a rough and ready dude, though. I thought you like you know you jump on. Yeah, but I'm right? also one of those guys. Uh, I I I have very realistic uh, perspective of what I'm capable of. Mm. And uh, yeah, if I haven't gone through basic training, you don't and, want any. Yeah, part I mean, yeah. All right, hey, look, I'm we're... pushing forty. It's over, man. Well, I can't the, handle, wow. the heat alone's gonna kill me. The plane we were on actually got hit by mortar. Oh, cool. I really. Love. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I was fine. I took very good care of us. It was very safe. I mean, Bob, Bobby was telling me, he was trying to tell me he was over there and, and somebody, you know, they had to do these maneuvers and somebody yeah. was shooting at him. It's just like, dude. They probably he, thought he, he was an right? Iraqi, little fat man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, getting a buzz on over there ain't easy. No. Uh, yeah. Got to chuck some Purell, put a little scope in it for flavor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's go to Tom. We're, for some reason, we have uh, now taken on Canada today. We got Tom mm -hmm. in Toronto. What's up, Tom? Uh, my, oh, I don't know if, if, if you're calling for me, but uh, uh, Dave, I think I saw you at the Comedy Cave in Calgary, but uh, since you guys are picking us, on us uh, good Canadians, I just want to give you the big F you. Oh, that's all you got. All right. Did he just put a spell on us? Yeah, some so. Canadian <laughs> spell. All right, more, I don't think I've ever been to trouble. Calgary. Have you guys been there? No. No. I've been to Toronto, Montreal. Toronto, Montreal. And Montreal. I've been to Hooker, Vancouver in 1990. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, my last 80 American dollars went to, to one girl in the alley doing something to me, and the other girl was like, for an extra 20, you can pat me bum. And she came over. She oh. called it a bum, and uh, so my last 80 American dollars. It's great. That's how Jim... So you had sex with Oliver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Jim remembers places he's been, by the way, by the, the, the hookers he's had in these cities. <laughs> it's amazing. He's got a map. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, more with David Tell. His HBO special is this Sunday. I I, I hear it's a great Saturday. One. Oh, oh, Saturday. I'm sorry, Saturday, Saturday night. December. It's December. December eighth at ten o'clock. Yeah, that's Saturday night. Uh, that's funny. Man. You named ten o'clock. Uh, Captain Miserable. <laughs> that's great. Uh, <laughs> uh, so December. Womp, womp. I was going to name it. Womp, 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 womp. <laughs> <laughs> and Bill Burr, Caroline's all weekend long. We'll continue. It's Opie and Anthony. You're checking out the Opie and Anthony show. David Tell in studio today. It's been a long time, Dave. Yes. Thanks for having me in, guys. Uh, no problem. You know, let's face it. There's a writer's strike on. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to be on. Um, I don't know. What's a funny reference? Oh, um, uh, yeah, uh, Carson. No. Um, <laughs> no, no, not Carson Daly. But Dave's got his HBO special this Saturday at ten o'clock. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a rough time to promote because none of the shows are doing anything. But then again, nobody's nobody's got live programming, so many people will watch it because it's something new and fresh. Yeah, you, you got to think. It's more like a housewife delivering that i'm doing it old school you know flyers uh bikini car wash uh you know get the message out word of mouth yeah you know <laughs> bikini car wash. <laughs> oh wow that's really cool there's a girl with large breasts holding up an insomniac dvd no when was wow. that now was that my house <laughs> no who is? look at that no. rack as they used to say <laughs> that must be one of your you look, guys oh do you have the whip it out one thing like yeah we still do that i didn't I don't. We, I, what, like oh, I'm oh, coming out of a time. Well, no, well no. what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Where's that know. young fella I miss? <laughs> <laughs> well, we kind of downplay young it. upstart. We downplay <laughs> it these days because uh, we're too busy to actually completely focus on it. But whatever. Well, that's cool that know. that you get to do. You know, yeah. like we were just talking about the regulations and all that kind of stuff. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing that you get away with anything now. You know, I, I love. Mean, yeah. Go ahead. No, no, I, I was I'm afraid say, to say anything after that. I was, only, <laughs> I was just going to say there's nothing better than when you're doing a comedy club and you get a chick to flash just because the girls right. are so not used to having, like, you know, girls show their rack in the club. Mm -hmm. mm. Nothing there. Nice.
<laughs> I ran out of steam before I started, but then the pressure was on. <laughs> completely folded. I feel like this is my moment, and I'm blowing it. No, no, you're Dave. You're killing. <laughs> hey, uh, it's Renee's last day. We got a lot of funny. People Are you in kidding the studio me? Today. And she does a bit for us uh, called What Renee Thinks is Funny. Maybe we should uh, give her a little attention today. Where the hell is she going? Why not? Renee's one of wow. our... Renee! Renee's our, has... She's been our intern for the last three years. And I think today she's finally given up on being hired. I think that's what it comes what down to. What happened? One of the few decent human way. beings. Oh, were you hoping to get hired we by this stupid show? This? Yeah. Well, them. So who you know could we... Duffy and everybody. Who could we uh, fire um, so she could get a job? Steve. You just got it like in comedy. Um, you just right. Give it six more months, honey. I you just gotta to hang in there. Wait it out. <laughs> so you're giving up today? Uh, Today's the day. To, yeah, Where are you headed? To. Oh man. Yeah. What are you doing? All right. You know what? I really don't care. I love them. I, it's what I want to do. I'm going to Z100. You whore. Hey. Holy crap. Yeah. How could, after what we yeah. did for you. Ow. You're going to Z100? Yeah, after all I we did you. for you I here. Know. I am so I sorry. But what are you going to be doing there? I'm going for the morning zoo. Holy really? crap! But wait, how is that? That's where. Wait, that, wait, that's wait. Not a, a, are you going to be working for the morning zoo, or yeah. are you going to get coffee oh, uh, for them? Intern, interning. Yeah. That's not a. Uh, can you stand next to her so I can attack her? Yeah, wait. really. I <laughs> wait a minute. I'm <laughs> excited. Damage. Okay. I, I know. I told well, wait, you guys, you said it was because you couldn't afford it, but if you can't afford it, what, where I park now is cost fourteen dollars a day to park. Where are you mm -hmm. going to park for Z one hundred? I take the light rail. Is that in Canadian? What are you talking about? The light rail on the turnpike. By the way, for the rest of America, Z100 is a is a pop crap. Station. I think you could tell by the <laughs> <pop> name, <laughs> just Z100. I know. But what are you talking about? But I thought we were turning it. Series rotation. She came to us, uh, loving Z100. But I think you started liking the Opie and Anthony no, show, right? Like it. You never liked us, huh? I did. I did, but I like both. I like. But now everything. you have to like Z100. No, I don't have to like anything. But I'm saying I like everything, and mm. I've always liked them from. We were going to throw you a party. You know what? Uh, party? Cancel the party. Yeah. Wait, cancel yeah. the party. Uh, no Katie. talk about party. Yeah, well, because it was going to be a surprise. Well, not the way these people keep secrets. It was Whoa. She's a loose cannon on a rolling deck. She's got too many ideas. Get her out of here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You uh, So you're leaving our... Um, I don't even know who does mornings over Non-paying job. Who does mornings it's over there? Elvis Duran. Elvis. It's a crazy show. They they, they like they, they do the they also do the phony phone pranks, but the guys always get so mad. I'm like, man, what are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> You're getting people all PO'd, Elvis. <laughs> Whoa, hey, hey, slow down. <laughs> Our non-paying job. You're leaving for their non-paying job. Yes, but it's a lot cheaper. She's than making it's statement. cheaper by fourteen dollars a day. Yeah. Okay. But they're also only. All right. the, only That's all right. We never really liked you anyway. Countries. It's no big deal. If um. <laughs> If, uh, oh, they're, in they're in Jersey. How come they don't say that? Z100. Yeah. Well, you know Jersey. where the light rail is. <laughs> what, what is this future city you're talking about? The, <laughs> the hovercraft? Is that where you're taking <laughs> it to the cloud cloud steps? I'm taking a Jetsons car uh, yeah. over the river every day. <laughs> oh, light rail, of yeah. course. <laughs> so you're uh, you're you're gonna go over there and pretty much blab everything you heard and saw no, over here? Yeah. No, absolutely. No, not good. Oh, I you're would blab everything over there. No, I don't do that. Oh, not well. at all. I kind of feel sorry for you. Why? Elvis, ugh. Oh, ugh. I don't care. It's He's I'm very excited. It's what I want to do. He's yeah. everything that radio shouldn't be. <laughs> it's what you. So it's not right just now. the money. It's, right. it's what you want to do. She's actually nodding yes. By the way. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's 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 what I want to <laughs> do. I've. What are you gonna do? Because she she was prepared for this. She knew yeah. she was gonna oh, yeah, get crashed. So now she's on. just like. <laughs> I, I know you're gonna be proud. you're gonna be an intern, but have they give you your responsibilities? They give me a brief overview. All right. What does that entail? Coffee black. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's very minimal of getting breakfast and coffee. A, a lot more, you know, on hands on. Oh, so you, what you're saying is we pretty much didn't really give you a chance to do anything. We and yeah. I know that's what they told you. They it's going to be a lot of hands on, hands on the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and have they the have they given you the speech? You know, the make believe you straight speech yet, or, <laughs> or uh, maybe they wait for you to, to actually start working there. Don't ask, don't ask. <laughs> and I didn't mention a name, by the way. Let's just keep it right there. Of course. Hey, the make believe he's straight speech. You're did, gonna be getting that one soon. Did uh, what 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 happened here that you didn't like? Anything happened here that you didn't like? Hmm. You can say now. Besides Pat ask. Duffy. No. Come on, what happened that you don't like? Tell us. You can tell the last day. You yeah, this is it. We'll never yeah. see you again. I don't, like, I don't want to leave on bad terms. You're not leaving on bad terms. What don't worry, we'll never have you back. Can you actually <laughs> oh, give an honest assessment of 
pretty much everybody in this room that you, you've worked with and that's stuff. Give an honest assessment of the people that you've worked with. Oh, that's good. Kind of right. I knew this was Kind of quickly, good. just like, you know. Like, leave on an honest everybody? note. Everybody? Like, well, yeah, yeah. But, or and, and, anyone and that comes leave, to mind. Maybe. Don't leave anything out, things that you didn't like about people. You know, put that in there. Just yeah. give a quick overview on, let's start with Iraq. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I honestly, if you're gonna bring him to Z100 with you, right? He's gonna start crying. You know what? If never mind, I was gonna say something. But say it. <laughs> you well, know what? If he, <laughs> say it. If you rock leaves, I'll take his job. Wow. Oh. No, you won't. All right. Oh. <laughs> so you want to sit and do nothing all day? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do now. No, I'm kidding. Whoa. Oh, oh hey. Oh, 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 okay, uh, Sam. How do you feel about Sam? Sam. Uh, I wish I could learn more about the videotaping. I, I, wanna, I wanted to learn she that. Did, you want to do everything. Well, you know what? Nobody really showed you anything. Uh, yeah, do the I show. More, I you, you don't understand more. what's going on here, Anthony. She's basically saying that she didn't really... What, you, what did you learn from us? How to get coffee. How to get coffee. Oh. Every store... I know where to go and get to See, now. you learned a little geography around uh, Manhattan. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'll, t I'll be honest with you. Here's, the, well, here's oh, why. Okay. Everybody was probably so petrified of like being alone with you to do anything because of some kind of uh you you might have said oh my god he touched me <laughs> <laughs> you know that bill burr bit because it would have been it, it probably would have been nice to go like hey let me show you some production or something right. and how that works let's go alone in the production room and then all of a sudden you come out and you know your sweater's askew i know right oh, wait, hold on, that's how you move up <laughs> mace are in the guy's eyes basically what ant's saying is you're a victim of past sexual harassment uh cases yeah, uh, yeah. I'd love to agree with that, but I think it's just that everybody's lazy. That is so, Everyone's just lazy. Yeah, this young yeah, woman's okay. starting out her career in broadcast. You guys are totally dumping on that. I know. Isn't that awful? When no. you were a little girl, did you go home like set up like a lot of little knobs and stuff like that? Like, woo, you're on. Call her. <laughs> bring, bring, bring. No. no. Tin cans so. with string yeah. tied to them. So what didn't you want to say? You can give an honest assessment. Or you have a few minutes left. Don't hold back. That's what. Yeah. I, ju I just do. wish I could have learned more about production and then. And who could have showed you? Who should have showed you? Oh, good idea. Showed me. Who good showed you? She basically wishes she could have learned something. Yeah. What's the worst oh, thing you said? <laughs> What's the worst thing you said off air when you walked out of here when you really started bitching about how you weren't uh, learning anything? Hmm. God, Dovey has to has to sit in studio every single day. Wow. Even he's not even here right now. That's why I'm saying it. <laughs> why didn't you just ask somebody though? Because uh, just in case they might not. I don't know. You know Did what? I, mm. Honestly, I, I don't know why I didn't ask. Squeaky somebody. wheel. I told Renee one right. time. I said one time, like if you have any bit ideas or any of that stuff, you should come right to us well, with gonna, bit ideas. Like, so we're you, gonna do the last uh, oh, what absolutely. Renee thinks is funny bit. Yes, you even had your own bit. You had your own. Yeah, had, had your own is, bit. You know what though? I did not expect that, and I do appreciate. I don't that. think you'll get uh, your own bit over at Z100. No, I don't. I don't tell you the truth. I don't think I will. I don't no, think you'll get your own bit unless it's who's the least funny person in the room, and you just sweepingly point to all of them. Well, this is what uh, Renee thinks is funny today. Okay. Her last, uh, Watch it be Elvis Duran. <laughs> that would be the, the move to make. <laughs> that would be good. Uh, basically, this is a three-year-old, um, and he's asked about monsters. And yeah. You, and you found this funny. Well, it was like the... Uh, I completely forgot what the other one was about, where she... Sparkling Wiggles. <laughs> you brought uh, Sparkling Wiggles? No, no, no. It's similar to and that. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Not at all. Not that at all. It's very it's similar, but not okay. that. Okay. All right. This is what Renee finds uh, funny. Here it is. And tell mommy again what you said you were going to do to him if he came here. I said I'm going to kick his ass. Oh. <laughs> That's not nice. If he's going to come in here, he's going to kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> he, he will? Yeah. <laughs> Come out in a movie. Come out. He will come out and kick my ass. <laughs> okay. And I can kick his ass. Okay. But that's not a nice word. You should say kick his butt. Oh. What's the difference, really? Let's stop. That's, that's only funny if that kid is 17. <laughs> <laughs> that's adorable. Awesome. Little kids cursing, yeah. uh, you, you find funny. Yeah. I do, too, to you tell you the truth. Ask, what'd you say? But you do it anyway just to hear him say it again? Yeah. 
Something about little funny. kids cursing is really funny. I, I didn't like the way the mother funny. milked it, though. The mother yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. She <laughs> milked it like eight times. What? You, what? What? And what? Then she says it. Then she goes, oh, say butt to try to redeem herself. I got I to gotta do an honest moment after hearing that audio. I don't know how the, the show survives without Renee. Well, since I'm half hard, I really... <laughs> <laughs> With a little lisp at the end, it was like very Kramer versus Kramer. Can I have some chalky, cheap cookie? Like, you know, like too cute, you know? <laughs> All right, well, here's the awkward moment where we tell Renee uh, goodbye. She wouldn't say anything mean about anybody, though. That's all right. She's, but I'm not a mean person. She's got to. You've got to have some yeah, kind of does. problem with she something. Crashes. When she leaves, she says stuff. <laughs> yeah. You You're know right. she does. You do. Who do you think is the right. biggest? So, so let, let some stuff I'm out there. Who do you think Why is the you? biggest incompetent here? <laughs> they don't on to... staff or interns? Either or. Either or. First on staff. <laughs> No. Come on, you might as well. No, I'm not going No, there. you should because it will help us. Help us on the way out because you have no motive to lie. Yeah, so they don't lose anybody again. As it, yeah. No, I think I get bashed off it. No. Who's going to bash you? Oh. Who's going to bash you? You're very popular. God, is she perfect for Z100 or what? <laughs> She's already. What anyone else noticing this? <laughs> She's anticipating the silly string party they're going to have. How they greet you over there. <laughs> welcome aboard! <laughs> <laughs> whack, whack, yeah. Hey, hey! <laughs> welcome aboard! You're more of a uh, coming up uh, another eight in a row type uh, intern. <laughs> She's perfect for that type of radio. Perfect. Oh. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can't let him say that. Now you you got to come back with something. You got to attack him. Come on. I got nothing. I, I can't. Yes, you do. Oh, You're no. sitting on it. Oh, that. that causes cancer. You can't sit on stuff like that. You got to let it out. Does it really? Watch, I will come back with something so good. I'd be like, I should have said that, but I not right now. I can't. Let her turn her knob. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pat Duffy is uh, requesting your goodbye music. This is it for you. This is the sad okay. walking away music are from you, Hulk. Are you gonna miss Duffy? No. You really don't like him. No. We're we're cool, but he just I don't know. What? I'm not. You do. You do know. Yeah. What? Is once they find out you're gonna get so trashed, I said that's great. I'm doing what I want to do. I don't. I really don't care. There was a little love thing going on between her and Pat Duffy back yeah. in the day. Yeah, a, a year ago. Like a year ago. No, absolutely not. What? It was a year ago. And absolutely. Did not. you guys hook up? A year ago. Yeah, they did hook up. Did it end with the baby oh. bird? Oh. <laughs> All right. Was he any good? No. Really? Wow. Sorry. Why was I, we did nothing more. I. He kissed me, and that was it. Why would nah, there was more. No, that, no. Honestly, there wasn't. Mm, really? Why was it no, no, that him. Abe Lincoln beard coming at oh. you. Did he bite your ass? <laughs> <laughs> Why was he bad? Yeah. If he just Than shaved, he would be a lot better. Is it this guy? Yeah, Than wants in. What? Than, go ahead. I don't Than. want him. Just talk. No, no, go ahead, please. Southern yeah, Fried Rock kid over here. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Dan? Well, R Renee has mentioned that she's less comfortable when certain people are not here and i mm. just want to know who that was if you could say I and was why less comfortable. um hmm. we don't have a lot of time so i'll say steve and jim just to get it uh, oh yeah get the ball rolling there and, was there was a day that you weren't here and steve wasn't here and it every day you're so used to everyone ha being around and they weren't here and it just felt weird oh. and i was like this mm. i don't know I like I, the, the gym part, but the Steve part. <laughs> yeah, you kind of wrecked. Because... Kind of wrecked it by saying Steve too. Uh, Pat Duffy squealed on her, and actually, uh, that day that Steve and Jim weren't here, this is all from Pat Duffy. Oh, it's yeah. not from me. No, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> that day Steve and Jim weren't here, in the same day, the next day she came and got on the train with Pat because they go on the train together. Light rail. And, yeah. said, <laughs> and she said, you know, I felt uncomfortable yesterday because Steve and Jim weren't here. And then Pat was yeah. like, well, you know, Steve and Jim probably aren't going to be here today either. And she was like, oh, really? And then 30 seconds later, she had a mysterious stomach ache and she was not able to come in. Huh. Let me explain. Let me explain. Those actually were not my words. In general conversation, I said, you know, it was just a little weird with ha without having Jimmy and uh, Steve there. You know, you you're so used to have, have having uh, everyone there every day, and they weren't hmm. there. It was weird. It was a little awkward. It's understandable. I'm eye candy. <laughs> <laughs> he, I have a general conversation with him, and he has to just tell the whole freaking world. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. That's why I tell him absolutely nothing. Was he a good kisser? No. Why? Wow. Because he just what? Because if he just. Shaved. It would have been. I don't know. It was a year mm. ago. I don't. Oh. I don't Did he have good care. tongue motion? Uh, you know what? I don't remember. 
Oh boy, uh, Honestly, that's not very good. I don't. That's very not very a good happy. selling I, I point for him. Talk about Duff anymore. Let's he's all. Saying, he's he's very forgettable. That's what you're saying. Let's all acknowledge that the last ten minutes of radio was just god awful. And uh, speaking of which, Renee. I, and the Renee listeners really... will accept that as an apology. Yes, sorry guys. Renee enjoys the 100. I will. We uh, we loved having you around here. All I kidding aside, it. okay. Sorry, all you listeners out there, <laughs> oh. don't want to hear me. All right, okay. there it is. There goes Renee. Later. Good. Renee did a nice job. There for she us. goes. Well, she'll still be over next time. Bye, Renee. Good luck, Renee. Good luck to Renee. David Tell. Thanks for having me. Kicked man. ass today, Saturday. His uh, HBO special will be on at 10 o'clock. Captain Miserable. Hold up, Renee. Wait up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah, Captain <laughs> Miserable. I've actually been looking forward to your special, man. Uh, I, I didn't watch the other ones. I mean, I watched five minutes. Whoa. Ago, Whoa. Really? Yeah. But I'm, yours I'm really looking forward to. All right. And also, we got Bill Burr. He's going to be at Caroline's all weekend long. He'll be at Caroline's this weekend. Uh, and Dave will be at Caroline's uh, at the end of the month, uh, December 27th through 30. 212-757-4100. And this works out perfectly. Because yeah. Dave's at Caroline's December 27th through 30. And then I'm in Westbury, New Year's Eve. Oh, I mean, yeah. North Fourth Theater. Uh, could it get better I for heard the about, holidays? I, I could heard you slur my thing. dates a little more? Dave's there through <laughs> ten, 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 cookie. <laughs> Renee, now I know why you don't want to be here, Renee. I get it. Anyway, this is Dave. a jungle, a political jungle in here. <laughs> yes, this, I really did afford that one terribly. Caroline, December 27th through 30. But if you want to really... Uh, December 27 through 30, and of course, Bill Burr there. This Jim's week. a genius. He'll do everyone else's plugs just so he can yeah. plug his own Oh, game. yeah. Okay. Sorry he about the acid reflex, but I will be there. <laughs> right. Yeah, perfect he voice, really but it's time for really he does taper up. Dude, my who, ticket master for New Year's Eve, <laughs> no one cares about it. <laughs> All right, we're, we're going over to XM to curse a little bit. Uh, you guys have a good day. Bye, Renee. Later. Bye. Hey, how cool is this? David Tell made the walk to XM Satellite Radio. What's yeah. up? Can I use it? Can I say it now? Yeah. Absolutely. What's up, motherfuckers? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we love curse we, words. We turn into a candy land over there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we turn into like, I don't know, like 17-year-olds or something. You That's just got to right, get it out of your system right away. Jimmy's doing drugs. Yes. Oh, no. What, what is that? that? Oh, boy. Chlamydia? No, no, oh, that's no, a big no. bottle too. Every no, that is oh. AZT. Oh, Allegra D. AZT. Oh no, Allegra. I like it's, the Allegra D. It's good D. for my allergies, so I don't Thanks. sneeze and cough. Is that what it is? I oh. gotta get glasses. I was over at that optical place. What's fucking... allergies when it's snowing? I like this. Yeah, a young, a young lad like you. How old are you? I, I, I'm, I'll be forty in July. I, I was putting a. Uh, I was. I, I'm getting the lens surgery, so I was. I have to wear glasses for a couple weeks. To let my eyes go back to normal, and uh, I was just looking at myself in the mirror, putting on glasses, and I'm looking at my fat neck, and I'm like, "You look like you're about to turn 40." I wanted to commit suicide in the fucking office. Uh, no, no, Jimmy, you uh, are not going to be 40. I'm 30. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm 39 years. Ago. <laughs> 39. Are you going to have a big 40 like uh, wow. me and my dudes? We're going to go to baseball camp. And, <laughs> oh um, God! We're going to run midget NASCARs and uh, have the biggest steak you've ever fucking seen. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to do the guy thing? He's going to go on a man yeah. case. Oh, that yeah. awful. Yeah. A man cation with his pals. We're going to parachute yeah. into Ecuador. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> we're going to hit a couple of strip clubs, right, guys? <laughs> you strip clubs. And I really want to go next day. Of Golf. Back to being pussy whipped. Yeah. <laughs> I really want to get a stripper and then impale her on a coat hanger and then me and my friends rape her and then try to cover it up. That's what I want to find. Well, that's a good 40th adventure. The translation. <laughs> Didn't John Favreau DVDs. do that movie? <laughs> huh? Didn't John Favreau do that movie? Yeah, that's yeah, what, yeah. That's what I was, yeah. yeah. I, I, was, I was about a bachelor party or something that went hey, awry. You're such an idiot. Hey, like, that's like the <laughs> reference, and I'm like, and I just name the Didn't, reference. didn't <laughs> that a movie do that? <laughs> Hang in the shower and cut you up with a chainsaw? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't they do that in Scarface? <laughs> yeah, Bill. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Oh, Bill, stop giving yourself the business. Bill oh, Burr. wait, was that Amy's husband out there? Yeah, we're going to get him in a few oh, minutes. Oh, okay. I was I wondering just, who that guy was. Yeah, okay. just, I just got to mention something. Bill Burr's playing Caroline's all weekend long, and uh, we were discussing as Ecstasy of Gold was playing. That Bill and I finally acknowledged something. The last time I went and saw him, uh, you know, uh, filming his DVD, we went out and had a few beers and stuff, and we finally looked at each other and went, let's, yeah, I don't let's know finally how... admit this. Yeah, we, we've never, I don't know if anybody who's it, listened to the show. It was an unspoken thing between uh, Bill and I for years that we just didn't really fuck with each other because we come from the same place. A, a bad place. A bad place, an evil place. A, an evil place that, that no good could come of it. No, I just knew. I always knew, like, uh, the second I saw it, like, maybe, like, three, four days on this show, I don't know what, there was just something in your eye, and I was just like... 
I know if that I, look. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I know, know his childhood. <laughs> I know how he grew up. I have the same stories. If I have a lock horns with this guy, it'll be the last day I'm on this show because it'll just get fucking and evil. Five minutes later, you're kissing, you're fucking rubbing yeah, his right. back. <laughs> <laughs> well, but Bill, the, Bill and I have like issues about really dumb stuff, and, and this comes up because you were saying you were going through an airport, and people, authority figures in general, are just driving you nuts, Just right? that guy saying nine zillion times to take your laptop out in, in like it's like I fucking got and I, I like literally get to it's like such a seething rage every time I go through like airport security see I can understand that but I'm from a completely different place I see it as these motherfuckers even though I, I, I really don't like the security people at all but the morons they have to deal with on a daily basis that don't yes. fucking do what they say. That just walk in. And they're the motherfuckers, not the security people. They're the fucking assholes that make the line so long. The mm. people that didn't take, oh, I take my shoes and with this. Oh, yeah, I'm the laptop the shoe I need bit, yes. to do. I could fucking go through security in a second. I'm fucking through. Old I know people. what has to be done. Old people <laughs> suck. Around the holidays. Fucking, oh, uh, uh, right. uh, uh. Old house frau women yeah, dude, I'm not, fucking I'm not suck that her. travel no. once a fucking decade. But see, you're I'm a bit just like this. By Bill the way. just <laughs> wrecked. Oh, okay. Bill wrecked it by bringing up the oh, wrong. Me too. The funny questions they ask you. Oh, sorry. I'm not saying that those guys. Don't, those but people Bill, bug me too. But yeah. I'm saying you like, brought up the wrong example. I'm talking more like you're at a street fair and it's in your. You've told us that you know the. You've done the bin many times where you just want to punch muffins because it feels good. <laughs> That's the only thing you can relate to. Well, exactly. beating up. Let me in on it. Where are you guys from? Boston, right? <laughs> I don't know where he's from, I'm but just, no, uh, just Long because. It, yeah, it's, uh, no, it's his whole it mindset. Oh, oh, the mind. Okay. The, no, the, like I was uh, in the dentist's office yesterday. Lindsay got some wisdom <laughs> teeth pulled, and uh, I'm sitting there in the waiting room. And she's uh, filling out paperwork, and this lady sat next to me with a big fucking coat and gloves. What's with Novocaine? And, and hat, and a hat, <laughs> and she had a planner and a big fucking pocketbook. And everyone else is being very considerate and being exactly. quiet with their... Even, like, just turning a page of a magazine, you're just trying to be, you know, considerate of everybody around you. And she's just like... Going through her shit, oh, yeah. taking her coat off, putting it back on. Big stupid coat. And even her writing was just really loud. And Lindsay's like, <laughs> Lindsay's looking at me, and she's getting the minor, you know, surgery done. And, and she's looking at me like, don't do it, don't do it. And I'm this close to fucking making a so massive wrapping scene. Wrapping the coat around her Thank head you, and just yes. belting her in the face yes. as many times That's as That's what I'm could. talking about. Bill and I can relate on that level. And she's not really doing anything wrong. But in my mind, she is a major fucking problem and needs to be taken care of. Mm. Yeah, just because she's writing and executed, and she's got post its, and now she's going through her wallet, and then she goes and gets her uh, insurance card, and now she has to open everything to put the insurance card back. At that moment, I'm like, and I'm losing my fucking mind, dude. I always felt that vibe, and then that one day when Poe took that kid down on the sidewalk, yeah, and I saw you snap, yeah, like how do you like that motherfucker? Yeah. That was like, that's uh, the yeah, guy. that's the guy. I knew it. I knew he had that in him. That's you were the guy. You were smiling yeah. right along, though, like, okay, good. Dude, good, you, I'm you, not alone. You, <laughs> you missed an opportunity in that dentist office. You could have slammed that fucking bitch. When she was making all that noise, she said, hey, why don't you keep it down to a dull roar? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, boy, that would have showed her. And it's just, it's like I got a, I got she a, said, you got moxie. <laughs> were you raised in a, a helicopter factory? <laughs> 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 I got a parking ticket once, and I marched around the neighborhood for 40 minutes looking for the guy, and, and Lindsay's like, what are you going to do when you find him? I'm like, I don't know, but I need to fucking find this Who guy looks, now. tries to look for the traffic agent I'll that gave you, you a ticket? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> like I, he's insane. I, because I double parked in front of my place to to uh, take some luggage out. It was a weekend, long weekend, whatever, and we came back to the apartment. I'm unloading the car before I go find parking. <laughs> At the time that I grabbed my bags, went inside, came back out, I had a <laughs> ticket. I was out of my fucking mind. I had to find the guy. I never did. It but. happens to me at least once a day. I get to that level of wow. rage. Wow. That's not healthy. That, yeah, it's brutal. I've been trying to like, I was on the way out here once again in an airport, and for some reason I stick my, you know, the credit card in. It doesn't work. You need to see a gate agent. So I go outside. I try to do the sky cap thing. He tells me I have to go see a gate agent. So I give the guy five bucks. He puts me in the short line, and there's only one person working our line. And it's like as I'm standing there, the guy up there like had overpacked his bag. It's like this Mexican dude. He has like a box with like a string. Oh, He's trying to tie, and like the cowboy yeah, hat. Yeah. And dude, that was it. And just every other word is fuck is coming out of my mouth and there's kids and it's just, it's just I, not good. See, that kind of stuff I can understand because when, when I'm put in situations <laughs> where I have to deal with other people fucking me over, that's what gets me. When I watch the news and say, well, a lot of people are angry at the airlines for the delays. that are yes, It's, it's the not people. the fucking airlines. 
It's the idiots that don't know what the fuck they're doing, like jackass with the luggage. People that don't know when they bring their fucking carry on, and it's a god. It should it should go into a cargo plane. <laughs> Never mind the fucking like baggage yeah. compartment. It should have a C one thirty just for this guy's fucking carry on, and he's trying to jam it in, and they're saying to check it, and he doesn't want to check it, and and strollers are fucking going up and going down that little slide. It's just people are stupid, and and I get in line to do anything, and I make sure it takes two seconds, just so in my head I could go see. I See how fast problem. that could fucking go. Right, right, you ever right. go? Now, D Jim's showing a, a little. He's got his prescription over there. I do. Pharmacies are amongst the worst fucking places for lines because you're dealing with old motherfuckers yes. that don't understand anything. So they go to get their prescription filled. I'll be behind one person, an old person, and they'll go, well, my Medicare card... Uh, should take care of that. No, you got to call your doctor. You're over the limit of something. Whatever the problem is, they can't grasp it. And it's then, not even in their head unless some fucking uh, <laughs> uh, big band music is playing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mrs. Green, we'll get that right to you. I'll have the delivery boy send it over. Here's the difference. I was at the Dwayne Reed yesterday filling a you know prescription, and I, I was the guy that said, hurry the fuck up. <laughs> and then, and that's the difference. Like, I can't help myself. I'll throw money at people that argue oh, so over, over like, line? 12 cents. I, coupons and shit like that. It's like, but the coupon has this. She goes, but it's expired. But it says that I, I take money out of my pocket oh, and I go, it, there, don't leave. Right. I'm, I'm in a hurry. I address, take your shoes off. <laughs> I address, what is with the shoes and the old people? Because... I'm sorry, well, to no, no, you, no, but but I wanted to say something at some well, point. I had here. you. Uh, I, made the, I, I made the wall. You know? <laughs> I, I actually have been online where oh, an old woman had to take her shoes off, and we had to convince her that she would get them back once they went through the magical machine. And I said, they're going to be better shoes on the other side. Everything you've ever loved is going to be alive again. It's like a Twilight Zone episode. It's going to be a swimming hole and a gazebo. All that, all that dirt from those graves you had yeah. to stand up out of the treads. You'll, you'll be in Willoughby. Yes. Stop Willoughby. Willoughby. <laughs> Yeah, good point. Dude, that's oh, rant you're talking about, dude. I address all that on my new CD, uh, Don't Get Me Started. <laughs> <laughs> Jim World. I can see the cover. You with a fist shaking it. <laughs> it's, no, it's just me looking around exasperated and like oh. craziness happened. It's really funny. Oh, man. It sounds it. <laughs> you know what that's, that's like how, many comedians, how many comedians have done that thing where they, they you know, they uh, create their utopia and it's just their name plus worlds, like, you know, Jim World. <laughs> and, then that's, and then that's like your whole thing, you know? You know like, how this happens. Like, well, demented, world. like demented world, Open Anthony's Demented World huh? that we put out. Oh, did you put that out? <laughs> oh, we put one of those out. Oh, God. Oh. But it was, you know, what ten, year? 19, ten years ago. Uh, 65, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Peter in Massachusetts. <laughs> He's got a question for Ant. Peter, go ahead. Oh, hi. Hey, good morning. Hi. Hey. Hey, Anthony, what's it like to be so smart and so much better than everybody else? You know what? Wow. I'll, I'll tell you the truth. Answer it's him. a pain in the fucking ass. Ignorance <laughs> is truly bliss, and I wish I was a lot more stupid than I am. But I'm too <laughs> fucking smart for my own good. I walk around looking at idiots on a daily basis. I hate human beings. I don't know why I'm one of them. I don't like driving with them. I don't like eating with them. I don't like anything about people. Are I'm not supposed to be here. What, are you ever worried about your road rage when you're driving around telling everybody to F off that someone might just decide to fuck with you at some point? First of all, no, because no one ever drives faster than me, so they'd never catch me. Like, the people that get road rage and they get shot, the person has to catch up to them to shoot them. That never <laughs> happens with me. And uh, I'm pretty, I've, I've mellowed out with my road rage a little. It takes a real fucking asshole you know to what? get me pissed. And, and Peter, that, that shouldn't be a worry because most people just uh, go after soft targets anyway. You know, the, the <laughs> soccer mom doesn't have a gun when you're fucking with her in exactly. traffic. Yeah, but I, I guess, guess I gotta ask you, Anthony, what makes you think the traffic laws don't apply to you like they apply to everybody else? Uh, you bend the laws. I, I know because, and I'll tell you why. No, I'll be gotta, honest with we you. We got a do gooter on the phone. I know. Yeah, yeah, you I'll are be honest legend. with you. God, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> the last man on earth. I know <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> I know enough cops and have talked to enough cops to know what is the actual law and what's get away withable. <laughs> and I'm not. I'm not talking about like every not to cop. Mention you have those cards that you yeah, can whip PBA out. cards. But I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm impervious to fucking. You know. Uh, getting a ticket or anything like that it happens 
But, the, you know, I could go faster than the speed limit. And if you're not going to do that, get the fuck out of the left lane. That's that's. Well, what about when you say you drive up on the sidewalks and fucking blow? <laughs> well, let, okay. I'm going to sit there while a truck is taking about 20 minutes to back into a loading dock, blocking the entire street, and not drive on the fucking sidewalk that no one's walking on? I'm not plowing over pedestrians like uh, Grand Theft Auto. But if it's open, I'm going to drive on the sidewalk, get around the truck, and be on my merry way and leave the fucking line of idiots that want to sit there. But Peter's all about safety first. Hey? Attaboy, yeah, Peter. I'm all about, I'm all ten about and two, right, bro? Ten and two. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that ten and two. You are a pussy. Oh. Hey, seriously, though. When you drive up on the uh -oh. shoulder and yeah. there's fucking like tr a traffic jam, That's yeah. right. everybody's late for work, uh -huh. and you just get up on the fucking grass and blow by everybody. You're right. Yeah. Because you got your stupid fucking get out of jail free card. Yep. Nobody's got that. Shit. You're right. Pete. It's like my uh, grandmother used to say, "Hooray for me, the hell with you." Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I am taking a chance that I will get a ticket. Believe me, it's not a get out of jail free fucking card. It's a, if the guy's in a good mood, uh, he he might let me off the hook. But if not, I take my own chance. If I'm fucking doing 120 in uh, uh 55, I don't think a PBA card's gonna help. It's taking chances, but, uh, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> there are people that take chances. That's what I do. And then there's uh, people like Peter. Ten and two! Ten and two! Peter, oh, keep it safe! Keep it safe, kids! You are a goody gumdrops. Ugh. He gets I'm a little crazy out there. Sometimes he goes 57 <laughs> miles an hour. Whoa. Stay in the right lane, hey, then. Peter. <laughs> Whoa, you know what happened? I'll there. bring up a prime example, and it happens every fucking morning, and this morning it happened again. I'm uh, in the left lane. Of course, some idiot doesn't want to fucking get out of my way. It's in the morning, too. It's like 4, four in the morning, so no one's on the road, but this idiot's got to be in the left lane. I understand this. I'm not even going to get on his ass and make a move. I'll make the move. So I go to the middle lane. The same time I'm doing it, a van comes from the right lane into the middle lane. Now there's three cars abreast doing the exact same speed. Which is not safe. Of course it's not. They're all, like, bunched together. Get The van, I'm saying, could have stayed exactly where he was and done the exact speed. He wasn't doing this to go faster. They're in cahoots. He was doing it to fuck me over. You're right. They were boxing <laughs> you in. They <laughs> saw me coming and said, let's... Fuck this guy up. That's a Dude. Colombian mafia trick. <laughs> machine gun you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> machine gun. All right, Peter. Yeah. Enjoy Thanks, your guys. safety, all right? That's right. Thanks a lot. Yeah, let's go to James Ooh. in Chicago. James. I hope Peter's driving 55 and the tumor that he doesn't know he has just shuts <laughs> off his face. <laughs> <laughs> James, what's up? I love hey, texts from the guys. cops. Thank you, uh, sir. The problem Anthony does, when I, if I have to come to a stop on the highway, I immediately say there better be someone dead right now. There better be a helicopter in the middle of the highway. If i got to stop, somebody should be bleeding to death right now. Yes. You're not alone with that. Yes. That's a, that's a big yes. error, thanks. Very good. <laughs> All right, hey, we got to get uh, Amy Fisher's husband in here. I didn't reckon. I walked in. I'm like, he's he's kind of a he's like a, a fucking like a Long Island tough guy. Yeah. But he's just standing there. I'm like, who is this guy? And then uh, then as soon as I sat down, strong I'm like, handshake. Oh, oh did I yeah. didn't. I didn't. Oh yeah. yeah. You didn't? No, yeah. he probably slapped. I'm from the island, you know. Strong hey, handshake. sir. Yeah, yes. Yeah, strong there he is. Handshake and a strong. What's cock. up, man? How, How you doing? doing? Hey, Lou. What's up, buddy? What's happening? Beat me up. I just walked in. <laughs> wow. I thought I could sneak one in. I didn't know you heard that. Yeah, this guy's. From the Lee Marvin shape. generation. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Lee well, Marvin. Yeah. <laughs> Lee Marvin. Yeah, we got a nice seat for you and everything. Yeah, Lou is a fucking big dude. He Jesus. literally can kick all our asses. Yeah. Jesus, Lou. We ain't fucking with you. Yeah. Lou is a problem. Fuck? Lou, you are a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Lou is a fucking problem. <laughs> you can tell right off the bat, Lou is a problem. Lou's a guy that starts off clapping you on the back, and 11 <laughs> beers later, he's fucking mashing your teeth into a curb. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Is that natural or steroids? Wait, let's get right to it here. Well, I don't believe in steroids. I believe yeah. you have to win the... Um, the uh, war not the battle. Yeah. In other words, you have to lift and stay in shape to uh, stay in shape for the rest of your life. So, you know, uh, implants. What no, do you say? no. <laughs> you might. Bicep you implants. implants. I haven't done a push up I'll in about twenty five years. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I was lifting very heavy weights for a long time, and then recently, I injured my shoulder. So as a consequence of that, I had to do uh, high rep exercises, and I lost about twenty pounds. So rather than walking around like a tank all day long, I rather walk around more fit, feeling better. So I learned a lesson: you're better off 
lifting high reps, lighter weight, and, you, and you'll feel a lot better. This is, of course, Amy Fisher's uh, husband, uh, uh, Lou, who's yeah. uh, in the porno with her, and we uh, we talked about it the other day. And uh, God, I hope you didn't hear that show, man. But we actually uh, now that I see you live, we goofed on the Fuck. dialogue. He's going to throw us a beat. Amy looks Fuck. great. I mean, it was nothing about yeah. It was, she uh, was fucking hot. The I dialogue mean, was yeah. Amy does look one. look really good. Yeah. And uh, we were commenting on, um, well, the one thing I guess we commented on, how many takes did you do during that uh, scene? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, a lot of people think that this was staged. It wasn't. It was just for our own personal enjoyment. It, yeah. It, it's and kind of filmed like every other porno out there, though. It really looks like No, no, it wasn't meant to be released as a porno, although... Did you kind of in the back of your head think, oh, maybe? Because it no. kind of looks like... It doesn't, it doesn't have the appearance yes. of, like, uh, a... Uh, Paris Hilton's, you know. Well, let me say just one turn thing. the camera I, I, on and let's fuck. Let me say one thing about those other videos. Those people plan the videos to be released in some clandestine way. Yeah. So they, uh, their, their objective was was to create <laughs> the uh, perpetrator. <laughs> <laughs> their objective was was to make believe that they were, you know, they didn't know anything about it, and they were going to film this tape and release it. And in my particular case, in our particular case, this was strictly. <laughs> You know, <laughs> home, home video film. enjoyment. He just sounds like a sake. cop after they overly beat the shit out of somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was a cop. Enough. Overly, really? I was a cop. Was a cop. There this, you go. This oh, yeah. incident, yes. the uh, person in question. Well, I'm for, you know, I'm out of the force like 20 years, but I still come off How as long are we on for? I was on for 12 years. Okay. Nice. Uh-oh. What kind of work since then? What does that mean? I've been an event video producer for 25 years. Were you one of those rogue cops? No. Just, <laughs> we just it was just called being a cop back then, by the way. <laughs> this is an Before, episode of The Wire. There aren't any real rogue cops. <laughs> Before any, everybody had the, uh, those goddamn camera phones, it was just yeah. be called being a cop. He was yeah. fucking Danny Aiello in Fort Apache. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's funny because I was in the, uh, one of the few cops in the Screen Actors Guild in those days. Really? Uh, right after Sonny Grasso and Eddie Egan. Uh, I got in the uh, Screen Actors Guild, and I was in about 40 or 50 movies back really? in the 70s. Yes. In the true. 70s? That's correct. Anything we would know? Frank Sinatra. I uh, worked in a couple of movies with him. Contract on Cherry Street and First Deadly Sin, Charles Bronson. But I mean, like... Charles Bronson. Like, yes. like, like, describe something we would know. <laughs> like, you remember that scene with whatever, I was the guy. I basically did extra Deep. work, some day player work, some stunt work. Kojak. I got shot and killed. Played a detective on that show. <laughs> really? Do you have Fun. dialogue? What you have dialogue? So you did all I the I had shows some dialogue, but to be honest with you, I was a lousy actor, so... How about the rookies? Were you ever on that? <laughs> the rookies? No, no, I wasn't. <laughs> SWAT? No. Mac Macmillan and wife? <laughs> <No>. Vegas? <laughs> I never did it with Cloud. true. <laughs> 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 Macmillan and wife. He was the one who well, well, that I'm glad it was a woman. <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't on Macmillan and wife because I'm glad I wasn't, you know, next to Rock Hudson. Oh, cool. Yeah. I dropped yeah. something in the, uh, you know... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that old school. There you go. Yeah, yeah especially he just fucked in. me in the ass. Is what he really got. Does this taste funny? Episode. I remember that was, that was a rough one. He arrested McMillan for drilling holes in the fucking restaurant. <laughs> <stall. laughs> Hardcastle McCormick. That is funny. People are just tuning in. This is Amy Fisher's uh, current husband, and I got to say right off the bat, you don't look like Joey Buttafuoco in person. I don't know why they make that. Uh, because, well, they make know, the comparison. Yeah, they make. He's, the he's older than she is, and he's a big guy. Yeah, like, like this guy, he, Joey has a, He's just a bigger guy and an older dude. That's, that, you know, yeah. this is not even a comparison when you when you see. Uh, you, well, I think they, you they, they, those two are uh, compared to like a Laurel and Hardy or an Abbott and Costello team. So. They well, want to get me in the mix, I guess, to somehow... I don't think Laurel anyone. ever shot anyone in the face, <laughs> <laughs> except with a pie. Well, you, you, <laughs> can I ask a question? <laughs> As a fellow Long Islander, i got to know something, because I bought this tape, yeah. and I want to know one mm -hmm. thing. Who did the drywall? In the, um, <laughs> in the stairway you know the scene. scene where she's on top yeah. behind a beautiful work <laughs> uh, <Actually. laughs> tree. just give me a name and a number after he's the very end. good you I, should see the finished work he came out great I saw the uh, beautiful where, home where Amy's beautiful. coming up the stairs in the towel I'm looking going this speckle uh, on yeah, the wall exactly. it's just sand it's not painted well, that, yet well, that you people know that, that we didn't intend to have this released to the public I mean you know that <laughs> we were like a room full of homos and like why would they have those drapes yeah, yeah, exactly. what is that it was strict Strictly casual filming. It was, there was no intent. So you guys were filming public. yourselves, and exactly. uh, so what's the story? Then you guys broke up for a little bit. Well, my wife made a, quite a few appearances on Entertainment Tonight. I, I'm sure you're aware of that. Where uh, sure. she had confrontational episodes with Joey, and then culminated in her uh, being forgiven by Mary Jo. Right. Yeah. So uh, it, it, was a, it was a huge success on Entertainment Tonight. It was the highly rated show they ever had. 
So subsequently, another Hollywood producer <laughs> came to us. I hate to use the that police terminology, but that's subsequently, me. subsequently, the I feel like I'm in a court case here. I'm on, uh, yeah. testifying in a traffic summons case. <laughs> subsequently, yeah. We, at the time and place of out our night sticks. At the time and place of occurrence, we are ascertained. I got a 317, and uh, I'm looking at a 289. Well, I couldn't help myself. I was listening to you guys talk about the traffic violation, so yeah. it just kind of like. So wait, you, 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 you are you um. Hold on. Yeah, so another producer after the right. uh, success of the entertainment uh, appearances uh, got a hold of Wanted Amy. to ride that wave into a possible reality show. So Affirmative. He uh, he put them together. Uh, they were chatting on the phone uh, you know, over two How, how annoyed were you as her husband, though? Like, what, 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 Did she say to you, look, I kind of want to do this, and you're like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm married to you? Well, but, you know, I'm very low-key, and this whole, and our, our whole entire marriage, basically, and the, and the time I've been with her has been very low-key. So I wasn't really prepared for this kind of uh, publicity. Uh, uh, just to, to, to really? bring everyone aboard, what we're talking about is uh, they w we're trying to get uh, Joey and Amy back together and film it for a reality show. Yeah, as uh, if they were an item. But it, it was so obvious to... I think to almost everybody, there was no, there was no there was nothing there. Well, it was obviously the, being done for. No, know, I'm not saying that. It did culminate where they did wind up going out with one another. Yeah, but so. was it really them going out? Yeah, mm -hmm. it was. It was. But I mean, the really? groundwork before that wasn't though. <clears throat> so then they're rehashing old memories and oh, one thing led to another, and obviously wow. that how didn't jealous sit were too you? well. How jealous? How angry? How bad do you want to smash? Uh, but if you go. Well, with a well, man, a man who can lift three hundred and carries a legal pistol, <laughs> I think he did very well controlling himself. Wait, we're going way too fast here, though. Yes, yeah. because the producer gets together. He's got this idea. I want you and uh, Joey together. But yeah, the big thing is you. She's married. So how does she come to you and go, "Look, Lou, I gotta"? Well, she didn't really come to me. I mean, I found out about it. I was uh, MySpace uh, getting no, not MySpace. <laughs> I, was, Sorry. I was buying. Her I cleared some, up the whole talk. <laughs> I was buying her some flowers for. Uh, Mother's Day, and then the lady next to me had a front page headline in the New York Post that they're getting together for dinner, and I wasn't informed of that, and so obviously I You got, had to find out from the front page of the Post? Yeah, I did, yeah, because before that I thought it was strictly conversation taking place for the sake of a reality show. Oh, boy. And uh, obviously that didn't sit too well with me. So you called her, and you, you're like, what is this shit? Yeah, we, you, you know, we got into it, in, mm -hmm. into it, and uh, I was upset say the least so uh i i left you know I was, I was living in a friend's apartment and, uh, and you guys have two kids together right yes we do okay yes, we do well so. two words revenge fuck you must have went on the ultimate <laughs> fuck suck <laughs> fantasy well, mission no. No. yeah you know i'll put it this way i didn't take it to the extent of oj but you know <laughs> good good you know i was more civilized about it so i i made a decision i mean i made a decision to uh get revenge on the one hand and possibly make a, a business decision on the other hand because I knew that if I was going to divorce her, it was going to cost money. Right. So here's on wow. a one hand, on a one hand, I could get back at her for what, you know, she did to me, embarrassed me. And on the other hand, I could hopefully make a few bucks out of it, to be quite frank. All right. I, I got to slow down again because it's something we talk about on the show all the time. Now, she obviously is getting uh, back together with Joey at the time. And now you might be heading toward a divorce case, and this is how fucked up the divorce laws. We have to go down this road again. You would have to end up paying for this shit and losing a lot of lot of money. The and house, possibly the, the house beautiful house, because yeah. she's decided to go. Uh, well, you know, I'm going to wind up paying for it in any event. So if I have to pay for it, screw her, screw him. I'll make a few bucks, and I'll right. take the earnings out of that and pay for it rather right. than my hard earned so, money. So you had all this uh, videotape, you guys. Obviously, how many how many hours of uh, uh, taping did you guys? Oh, do? There's a lot. I mean, we did over. Few years. Is there a box? Jesus. There's, there's more. A few years. There's more. <laughs> Is there a, wow. A box set in your future? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the remaster. Oh, a few portals. years of, of wow. How did you meet Amy Fisher? Like when you first met her, you obviously knew who she was before you met her. And that's actually, me, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, well, yeah, I did know who she was, but uh, believe it or not, I. I didn't even know who you guys were, so I didn't even follow. What? That's right. I'm sorry. Like a lot I don't of want to offend anyone, but <laughs> so right. what, what happened? She you, was in the news a little more than us. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's true. But you met her, and and when did did it turn you on? Like you know, I'm hooking up with Amy Fisher. Like no, you know, no, because I'm an event video producer, and I've filmed people from uh, Mickey Mantle, JFK Jr. So I've met a lot of celebrities, so-called celebrities in my life. So that didn't impress me. I went on a, a blind date. <laughs> that's how we got her. I went on, no, no, Amy, I, I, I want to tell you something right now. You don't impress me.
<laughs> it didn't impress me. She was hot looking. She's hot. She yeah. had a great body, and uh, I was divorced, and I want to have a good time, basically. So I, I didn't care if she was. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You uh, went on a blind date with Amy Fisher? Well, I, it was a result of a uh, AOLmatch.com. Who drove you, Robert Chambers? <laughs> <laughs> that's a. Uh, uh, wait. She was, she was on, she was on uh, AOL looking to hook no, up? No, I was. I used that. You know, at, at the time, I was about 49 years old. I was still doing the nightclub scene, although I didn't like to do that. So AOL was a good vehicle to meet people back in those days. I don't know how it is today. But, but she she had to have been on it to have seen. No, what she did man. was she she didn't like dating that much. You know the guys, you know whatever. So right. she saw my so-called ad on this uh, internet uh, match dot com. She liked the way I looked. She liked what I had to say, and she contacted me uh, via email, and we had a blind date. Did she didn't say I'm Amy Fisher. She just said, no, no, no. Okay. She used a different name. And you really so didn't she know shows what... up, and then you, you... I showed up late. She was waiting in the car. She said, "Look, if you want to show up five minutes late, I was getting ready to leave. But when I saw you, or shoot somebody, <laughs> oh, uh, Jesus, uh, <laughs> sorry." She said, "When I saw you, she said, I, I, you know, you, you attractive, you know." And uh, she was glad we met. We had dinner at Bocce's, famous restaurant here on Long Island. Did you know right off the bat, like no, when you I saw didn't know. her? I did, I See, I would have looked at her and <laughs> gone, know. holy shit, Sammy Fisher. I wouldn't have no, known, honestly. Driven away. <laughs> what did she eat? But you know what? Now, let, me, let me just say, what, I'll, I'll say a thing in, in, in her defense. What she did years ago was a reckless, idiotic act. I mean, not, not to minimize it. Yeah. But she did her time. Definitely. And Definitely the lady true. that I know today is quite different. I mean, you know, as I know, she, she worked at the Long Island Press. She's a good uh -huh. mother, takes very good care of our children. But haven't you ever gotten into an argument with her and at one point in the back of your head, like, this no. woman has shot somebody in no. the face? You know, you know what? Is that where the police training comes in? <laughs> you know what? I mean, it's funny, but but in a way, I, I don't fear anyone. I don't fear whether her or, or a six foot eight, 500 pound guy. I'm not, that's not my makeup, you know? You so. could have just said black. I mean, really. <laughs> what are you talking about? Who's this sweet out there that we don't know? Uh, I, don't fear, I don't fear a seven foot no. what I'm saying, I, I Nordic can't. gentleman. <laughs> Or a gentleman who throws down a rhyme or two. Yeah, yeah you're talking about a Viking. Uh, in other words, what I'm trying to say is, I, I treat people one on one. If they treat me good, I treat them good, and and I act accordingly. So, so how did the past come up? You guys start dating, and then no. What happened was is that she liked me, and we were, we were conversing very well. We got along very well, and she said, "You know what? Let me tell this guy who I am right away." It was this way to give him the opportunity to either move on right away or. Because I like him, you know, let me let him know right away who I am. And then if he doesn't bother him, we can continue on the relationship. So when you know, she said, I'm Amy Fisher, did you go, oh, that's the girl who shot the person in the face? Or did she have to then explain? No, like, no, I knew who she was when she told me who she was. Oh, okay. But I was more interested in the uh, chicken dish and the uh, parmesan and everything else. It didn't really phase me. <laughs> <laughs> you were the coolest guy in the world. Did you have yes. a drop gun in the bathroom like in the godfather? <laughs> no, yeah, Excuse me, uh, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Watch your hands uh, drop it to the floor. <laughs> don't make eye contact. But don't look away. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> by the way, that is one of my favorite movies, and my wife has not seen it to this day. What? I'm trying to. I it's said not you a have chick's to watch movie. It. It's not a chick's I movie. I told you, you got to see this yeah. movie. My girlfriend watched it, and she got bored during the wedding scene. And I wanted to strangle her. How do you fucking not like the wedding scene? The opening, father. Yeah, of course. Hey, let me. You are uh, one thing. Like you're older than Amy. This is how much of an age difference is there between you two? Um, I just turned fifty-seven. I don't know how old Amy is. And she's thirty-three. Oh, oh I, wow! So she's she's a young, great, huh? A young girl. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Dude, you kidding me? So the like, greatest. There was a sexy ever. moment in that in the tape where uh, she said something about like daddy. She said something like that. Oh yeah, that's kind of fun. I was we fucking, like that fun with that. And you said like your little girl's pussy. And to me, <laughs> I said I said I bet uh, you that that's how like that's what their real sex know, is like. But they had to edit that out so it didn't have that. The whole, funny thing is when I met with the. Uh, the distributor and they saw the footage uh they said hey we got to make this into like a guide to uh proper marital relations so they you know, <laughs> they, they they were impressed by it they you know they, they liked the way everything flowed and the way we were uh you know the way we got how pissed with is your ex-wife that you're hooked wow. up with such a hottie now <laughs> uh, okay what was that how, how pissed is my wife what your ex-wife now oh, my you... ex-wife oh no, I've heard. No nah. really? <laughs> wow. I've been, I've been Way to blow for 14 it. years. So. <laughs> no, right. How do you feel about Butterfuco? Like, have you met him? I did meet him. I mean, I met him on the shows, and, uh, you know, I, I. Could you take him, you think? 
Absolutely. No, he he ass. I have a matter of fact, I, I wanted to challenge him to that uh, celebrity boxing. Uh, <laughs> I was supposed to fight him on that celebrity boxing, but he backed down. But how about like a stomp down? You know what I'm talking about? Like a real like, you know, oh, hey, I can't believe you're here. You know? <laughs> Actually, we, we, we did have, we did. If you saw, if you saw the Entertainment like Tonight hotel. episodes, I did have a, a verbal confrontation with him. When okay. Was, mm. You know, when he was getting on my wife, my wife wanted to come clean. They wanted to have an apology, you know, take responsibility for the actions. That's the way it was supposed to go. And then he came on and blindsided or attacked her. That's right. where I stepped in mm -hmm. and I confronted him. Well, mm -hmm. being from Long Island, I have to tell you, it's either cop or mechanic. The rest of them, they're all little curls. All right? I'm a hedge fund faggot. That's what you are. <laughs> was, that, uh, was that shot at your house? That was, yeah, was in my home, yeah. Wow. Yeah, because um, I, I would never say where, but uh, you live probably <laughs> a couple of doors down from my mother and... Uh, Sal Shore? And Sal. Yeah. Yeah. But, Somewhere on the island. Yeah, in the same uh, community there. So uh, I, pa I passed your house a couple of weekends. <laughs> I don't think you, you did. It's a gated community. Yeah. Wow. Didn't pass it. Oh, no, I passed it because I'm allowed right. in. Oh, yeah? They oh. allow you in? Ooh, I'm my my huh? mother lives there. I want a refund on my security. My mother lives in the same community. <laughs> yeah, Lou, you met, wow. you met it's, it's, house it's all the rage. She's like, you know, Amy Fisher lives down the street. I'm like, really? Yeah, you missed what he was saying. His mom Yeah, my mom lives there. Well, what community. is very funny is her and I can go out. I mean, there's no problem. Nobody approaches us. It's beautiful. But when yeah, she well, goes you. out by herself, forget it. Yeah. Right. You know, well, you, they're, they're not going to, you know. Gonna, they're not going to bust balls, that's for how, sure. How One of those she, how, meaty <laughs> fists in the face. Yeah. I don't think he I, just <laughs> looks like he's a hard-faced man. He's what? a fucking, he's a major fucking problem. He's like one of those guys you have to hit with a piano. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't think I was going to have so much fun. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, he's a fucking, you can, you can hit him as hard as you want and you just do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, then, and then you know you just fucked. <laughs> that fucking haircut. Just that uh, my nut. Uh, yeah, you got so anyway, you know, I'm caught, caught between a rock and a hard place now because uh, <laughs> we created this tape. I didn't expect to be a porn star at 57 years old. My wife obviously didn't sign off on it. She was upset about it. But what happened was it hit number one. On the uh, AVN charts. It's and the, my house. I have it. Your house. Good. Yeah, I love it. I hope you paid for it. I did. I actually did. Yes. yes we, so, we, uh, we screened it. Yeah, let's, uh, we're, we're doing pretty, uh, pretty well here. So, um, you're, you guys are separated. You got this footage you call Red Light District, right? Right. And, uh, all right. So now they're going to send this porn out. And then obviously you and Amy got back together. How long after that? It was about a month. And now you have to tell her <laughs> no, what you uh -oh. did. <laughs> Well, I tried to, uh, to stall it off with the distributor. I mean, they created this site. I tried. Hey, look, fellas, it was, a, it, was a, it was a decision I regret. Well, when you realized you were getting back uh, together with Amy, you must There's nothing been, I could do. You I must have been thinking in your head, like, oh, fuck, how do I tell well, her that, Well, you know what? That, you don't say this on according to Jim. That's for sure. How do you handle it? You know, hey, in, in a moment of heated passion, you know, you might... But I want to know. Tape out there. I guess what I'm saying is I want to know how that conversation kind of went. How do you break the ice and go, ah... Uh, I, uh, I guess well, this distributor, you, you know, uh, I had bought up the uh, the uh, website amyfisher.com, and what I did was made an official site for her, which she really had no interest in, but I just wanted to buy the domain name anyway. So they, as part of the deal, they took over that site, and they created the site for the, uh, you know, buy the tape, and all the legal work was done. So obviously when I told her, I mean, what am I going to do? It's going to come out. I had to let her know about it. She almost hit the floor. So, but uh, I have no regrets looking backwards. At the time, I, I felt I was justified in what I was doing, even though it was an emotional decision. And uh, Lou, what they ask you? What is the? I've always wondered about this. What's the legality of that? Like, if you film, I mean, I, I know it's your wife and, it, and you're mm -hmm. in it, but like, is there, is there a way? Like, because people always wonder about Pam and, and and Anderson and Tommy. Like, what's what's the legal thing she could have done to stop it if she wanted to? Well, she is trying to stop it right now, but what's been happening is that uh, the response to it has been so overwhelming. Uh, from what I'm told, it's like 25 times the amount of tapes sold in the first two weeks than anybody. It's number one out of 50 on the top 50 at the AVN site. I'll give you an example. Kim Kardashian's tape is not even in the top 50. Ah, That's which, right. <laughs> which, by the way, take that, Ray She doesn't make it much. <laughs> so, 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 so obviously she's resigned to the fact that it's out there. Even though uh, we, she had contact. And Kim's lawyer. tape, they're starting to say that she released her own tape. You know, like you were saying earlier, a lot of these, so, so a lot of these sex tapes that the people in, involved are actually. 
No. You know. And, well, let me say, in addition to that, she's been getting a lot of calls for lingerie products and other uh, hmm. spinoffs from that. She's getting swamped with that and to do talk shows and some everything else. So she's resigned to the fact that it was done and you pro probably have to make the best of it at this juncture. I don't know if legally we can do anything to get out of it. You spanked pretty well, too. I was watching uh, Lou administer a spanking. <laughs> yeah. He's got fucking just Sounds big mitts. Spanking. Yeah, no, I, 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 was real... I was going very mild. Very I have to spank all little, those years of girls' hands. hands. Very like mild. fucking Jake Lamont, I have little girls' hands. I, 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 I have to spank like, like, like that. But he was doing a spank. Oh, wait, come over here. Bend over. I'll give you a demonstration. <laughs> he was doing a cup of the hand and fucking the whole cheek. I was like, what a big fucking... Those are good spanking hands. And just right. fucking in every room. You know, ah, we're going this room. <laughs> yeah, where were the kids? Oh, there by the this? pool. Oh, thing. The kids were at school, or they weren't in the house. So this was an afternoon house. fuck. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah. pretty much broad daylight. Day long. We noticed the wow. light filter changed a few times too during some of the scenes. Like all of a sudden, you guys were in sepia. Yeah, <laughs> no, well, well, I thought that was a dream. <laughs> that really happened. Well, let me put it this way: I'm an event video producer. If I wanted to really make a video, uh, you know, and plan this thing, I would have had a lighting crew in. I would have had cameramen in. It was. Well, the day I changed, I didn't, I didn't even give a shit about uh, white balancing or whatever. It was just done for our own, <laughs> yeah. our own fun. So, I mean, that's why some of the scenes that look out of out of white balance. Lou doesn't, I, it was funny, too. There's one scene we were laughing because you look like you were skydiving. You're having oh, sex. Oh, that was the... It was actually a really good fuck scene. because It was just like, it just looked like raw fucking. It was, it was, yeah. it was hot. Which one was this? You, hey, she's on her back, and you're like laying on top, but you had your, your left leg <gasps> one leg was in the up. air like you were skydiving, which I could never do. My fucking bag would tighten up and my <laughs> leg would cramp, but well, you, your leg was up <laughs> in the air. I'm like, pretty acrobatic. Well, let me give you a little insight on this. This was very oh. difficult to, to do this because uh, we're having fun. We're enjoying <laughs> ourselves, but we don't have the uh, uh, the benefit of an independent film crew who could walk around, get certain angles, and so right. on and so forth. So when we wanted to make these tapes of ourselves for our own private enjoyment, you had a tripod, and you had to be on mark. You had to look up at the camera, so it was very, it was very awkward. So a lot of the scenes, like in the very beginning, that beginning scene where you see me almost like you know straightening up, I'm basically the viewer doesn't know it. I'm just looking at a tri at a uh, monitor to just make sure I'm on mark and I look good. You know what I'm saying? We so know. it looks very stiff. We, some of the scenes, yeah, because there was yeah. no reaction. Mm. Uh, emotionally in your face or anything yeah. to you coming it was you shot it, you, the first load you shoot in this video you're pretty much straight face going yeah, i'm shooting a load it was like watching it was like watching superman well, get blown you know, yeah <laughs> you're just like man whatever the, the re yeah the, i did look like superman the reason for that again is because i was more <clears throat> concerned about you know being on camera as yeah. opposed to uh you know my head's chopped off it's or, not you the know. kind of guy you are so yeah. six it's foot eight, it. you know it just doesn't scare you first load it's no big deal that's right <laughs> I think we Shake should it up. do this in 24 frames. You know what I like is that whenever you yeah, talk about it, it's, it's more of a movie feel. Hey, you just cut this poor guy off. <laughs> sorry, oh, sir. No, I'm sorry. No, I, I, I do it in the comedy club. clubs to him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Lynch. laughs> oh, is that like when you talk about it, because you're a gentleman, you're from a different generation, right. now, like us, us, you know, trash over here, you're like, we're enjoying ourselves, having a good time, you know? Like when old people talk about that, they'll, like, it's, I was in my mind, like, hold on, let like, me get my walk around. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Older people, they, they never say sex. It's always like, we were enjoying ourselves, we had a good time. My mom talks that way, and I could always see her, like, being tea bagged in the back of, a, like, a Model <laughs> T or something. Like, we enjoyed ourselves. We, of course, you know, showed affection. You know, there's no detail. Yeah, black dick in her mouth. Yeah, it's like, two in the air. <laughs> You know, the, the fucking forbidden fruit. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I have overalls open. <laughs> no, that's class. That's what I'm saying. No, no, I didn't no, need no, to bring it up I did, generational. I didn't, I didn't drive up here in a Model T, by the way. So, uh, no, you know, I could get down and dirty, too. But when I discuss my Obviously, wife, I yeah. exactly. we did we things that don't. people do yeah. who are in <laughs> love. Yeah. <laughs> Four on the floor, airtight. <laughs> I, I found a fucking <laughs> condom in my, in my parents' house. I was, I was living with my parents when I was 15. I found a floating rubber. In the wow. Why don't you just stick it in her ass so I don't have to see uh. it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. that's horrific. Uh. Oh, shit. Hey, Lou, how old are your kids? Uh, six and two. Do they get any... Allegedly. Well, I guess the six-year-old, does he get any shit about no, uh, no, mom's past? No, no, You know, we live a regular mundane life, believe it or not, and we treat our kids uh, the highest priority. 
make sure they have the best things in life, and we love them very much. By the way, I, I, I got to back you up. I've heard uh, that exact thing uh, over the years. When it, now, comes, we're, to, we're when it comes to Amy and, and her mothering skills and all that. You know, we go to school meetings, and we were right on top of homework and stuff like that. She's really a great mother. I mean, and... Uh, <laughs> You know, this is a people. Is have, people have the re really wrong impression of like who she really is. I mean, this so-called stage persona, and then the real person behind the, uh, you know, what she is. And it's like Jim, <laughs> <laughs> the real guy. She's just a, yeah. a down-earth, regular, ordinary type of type, type of girl. Is her mom like still Jim. alive? Sure is. Does she uh, approve of the relationship? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Has she ever you know, gone into? Let me just cut you off on that relationship. A marriage, relationship, Sorry. marriage. It depends upon how people treat one another. Yeah. And how they understand and communicate one another. Age is really irrelevant. If you take care of yourself physically, mm. and uh, and the two of you get along, and you have things in common. Those are, that's the groundwork for good marriage, as opposed to being close in age. That that really you know doesn't really mean anything. It's how you communicate. You, you don't have person. to explain that to myself or Anthony. So <laughs> let's all hug. <laughs> the, two, the two of you are married. Yeah, uh, me and uh, me and I'll be married. That, that did sound a little weird. Get, you don't have to explain that to me and Anthony. Right. We've been going out now for quite a while. Let's cut up that pecan pie. <laughs> <laughs> so you're both getting along good. <laughs> yeah, but now that people oh. see you in porn, don't like girls. Like they see in a club or whatever, don't they like want to like you know? Cause well, you, actually, you you're know, kind of proving yourself, right? I don't. I don't go to clubs, and every everywhere I go is with my wife. And it can family. happen anywhere, though. Like you know. Yeah, but you know, when that was shot, I had longer hair. I got the military buzz cut, so you know, I wear a Yankee cap all the time. So a lot of people don't even know you know who I am. And it's, it's fine with me. Mm. So fine. you whip out that cock online and show him. <laughs> well, <why? laughs> now, if I walked around with my Johnson sticking out, then everybody right. See, there you go. See? My Johnson. My Johnson, yeah. My, my howdy do. <laughs> and my Mickey <laughs> Wang. <laughs> well, what, what do you call it today? What do you call it today? Am I, cock. Yeah. Back. 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 Well, We've well, always it, called he's it He's probably not used right? to it on being on the radio and being that dirt either. Because, you know, most of the time. Oh, we can say anything yeah. here on uh, satellite. Yeah. Hey, can we get Amy on the phone? I think she's taking my son today. Yeah, you know, he just uh, you know, was that was the excuse the you guys worked out. No, 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 no. He, he had, <laughs> believe it or not, he had he had surgery. Yeah, no, he had my he surgery had, done. Uh, and oh, he just sorry. got out yesterday, and it's where we were yesterday. So tomorrow <clears throat> would, would be a better time to talk. So did you ever uh, go, get, go in depth with talking to her about uh, the whole episode of her shooting? Uh, you know what? I never really get into that with cool. her when she uh, confides in me anything that she wants to confide in me. It's between us and mm -hmm. special relationships. Unless I don't press her. I don't. Tape. I was just wondering if she. <laughs> right. <Unless it's> just, <laughs> and you've had a fight. <laughs> I was just wondering <laughs> if, <laughs> if she ever did. You know. I don't press her on that. I, she, yeah. she does confide in me from time to time, but I allow her space to do it when she ever wants to do it. You know, that's so one, of, you one of those dumb kid things you do. <laughs> How come you know? kids always cause... find guns, but they never find like the sex? Well, look what happened in this mall. What did this, mommy? <laughs> I mean, look what happened in the mall that just recently took place. So you don't know what happens in, in right. some child's or some kid's mind to make them do something stupid like yeah. that. When's the last time you belted somebody? Ooh. Ooh. Probably sure. when I was on the police force. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, a while ago. Mm. Do you miss in it? In the old days. Well, actually, I liked it a lot when I was young. When I was a kid, it was very exciting. I couldn't wait to uh, go to work. I didn't want to go home. But Crack gets, some skulls. It gets <laughs> the pre You know, believe it or not, I have a lot of respect for police officers, especially Definitely. those who work in um, high crime. Uh, what force were you on? I was in, uh, I worked in Brooklyn. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, and some of the toughest neighborhoods. That's nice. What, dec what decade? It was a decade when Lincoln was elected. Uh, I was saying 70, 70s. Oh, it must have just oh been some of the worst right. times yeah. ever. The Gennaro taxi I, I driver. On, yeah, yeah. The crack <laughs> epidemic. Well, I'll tell you something. I came on right after uh, Serpico, but I'll tell you there's one movie, uh, Dog Day Afternoon, yeah. which I was actually on that actual site that uh, that occurred, and the picture depicted the events totally, cool. total fabrication, because the police at the scene at that time were very cool and level-headed, and they allowed the perpetrators mm -hmm. to be escorted out of the building and where one of them was subsequently and there's that word again shot on the way uh, South. to the airport yeah but the police handled that in a very professional manner and they were very cool and laid back in what they did but the picture uh, portrayed them as like a bunch of bumbling idiots so 
Did you have a black partner who was too old for things? Actually, I had. I had. I actually I had the greatest partner that any any man could ever want for a party. He was a great guy. He passed away from cancer about six seven years ago. But he was terrific in that he wasn't big. It was Rocky. I loved him a lot. He was right by my side anytime, uh, any situation. You always count on him, and he was a great, great police officer, and uh, sorely missed as a as a friend. Hey, did you get that coat when you did uh, Kojak? Actually, that coat's <laughs> an, that's an Abercrombie and Fitch. Hey, really? there you go. Yeah, that's my wife, <laughs> my wife got me involved in Abercrombie and Fitch, so she's keeping me up to date. That's the good part about being married to a younger woman. In that, you have no, you have no uh, uh, reason to get old. I have young kids. I have a young wife. We do a lot of things together. It keeps me young, and uh, that, that's a that's a plus in a, a so-called younger woman. You get to feel woman. a nice, yeah. smooth ass. Do you have, <laughs> yeah. I, I, let me tell you, that goes a long way with me. Believe me, <laughs> <laughs> wow. I couldn't be with a fifty, sixty-year-old woman. Never forget it. You know what? Uh, <laughs> I want to know what uh, Lou finds funny because we've been cracking jokes for the last hour, and we can barely get him smiling here. <laughs> he takes it in. I know the He's good. I know the listeners are enjoying it. What What do you find funny, Lou? Well, I have, you have to look at, at life in a, in a, in a humor, humorous way. You can't Gallagher. take everything too I know serious. It. You know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know whether I'm, qu I'm quoting Freud or Michael yeah. Kant or whatever, but you know, you got to be, you know, you got to treat people with respect. You can't be on edge. You got to enjoy life and enjoy conversations. And Schindler's that's, List. Schindler's <laughs> List, absolutely. <laughs> well, cops usually have the best sense of humor because they've seen so much crazy stuff that, you know, like they just got to, like, laugh at it or drink it. Well, you it know, out that's funny because or... you talk about my references in police terminology when I talk about things. And um, when I was a police officer for 12 years, it's never changed. Even though it's 30 years ago, whatever it is, I still feel I can get into a car today and do the job. So uh, I'm thankful for that experience. It also gives you a chance to view people in many different situations and understand different walks of life. So it was a very, very good opportunity. <laughs> a lot of stuff what? underneath that statement. <laughs> well, like profiling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? There's nothing wrong with profiling. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It's, it's too much political co co correctness in, in, in law enforcement today, which is wrong. Uh, in in everything, actually, Lo. What got you off the force? 12 years, you didn't retire. Well, I could have vested at 15 years, and what happened was I um, <laughs> formed my own entertainment company, and I was doing, I was one of the first mobile DJs at the time, and I was moonlighting doing that. I was doing big gigs at the Hilton and the Hamptons, and then I, I instead of schlepping this equipment around, I got into the video business, because I was hiring video people as subcontractors, and I said, hey, this is easy. So I self-taught myself how to film and edit, and hooked up with a major studio in Manhattan, and I was with them for like 22 years. And then also I uh, have my own clientele on my own. And thank God I've been very successful. So I had a choice to make back in, uh, I think it was 82, whether to go from 29000 a year and a pension or to go to 250000 a year. What did you decide? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think this, I made the same decision. You said my career in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, four years ago, I'm making half a quarter of a mil. Now look at me. So, I uh, <laughs> in that jacket. <laughs> and, also, and also, at the time, at the time, at the time that I made that decision, the police force wasn't as attractive Fuck as it, it once was because it was quite frankly very depressing. After yeah. a while, when you work in high hazard areas, it, it does become very depressing. Do you remember yeah. when freaking Frank Lucas got busted? Were you working then? Frank Lucas, uh, What's that, that was probably something the squad, the detective squad handled. Yeah, I think uh, it was a major Denzel narcotics. Movie, what is he, a major oh. narcotics? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's something that the average street cop was, uh, wasn't was involved with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, exactly. I heard that, that, that they took a lot of liberty with that uh, that story. Is that true? Again, I was uh, on patrol, so I handled the every mundane task uh, of uh, patrol. Yeah, beatings. <laughs> handled you know, the beatings. Like handled the back alleys. Yeah, beaten. Doesn't so. that suck? You didn't have the tasers back then? No, you know what we had? Uh, you know, look, I'm off for a long time. I'll give you a, a fun story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll See, this you, is what he finds funny. Yeah, Here yeah, we go. I'll, I'll, give you one, I'll give you one of my <clears throat> war stories, which you can't do today, but I was a rookie. And I went with a, you know, a seasoned cop to a, uh, a family dispute, some kind of dispute. It was a downtown Brooklyn 7-8 precinct, which was a very, very violent precinct at that time. Most of the gun runs were founded. When we locked up Indian construction workers, you couldn't even get the cuffs on their wrist. So it was a very violent precinct, but I liked it. I was 21. I couldn't wait to do it. So we went on a dispute. 
And I go in there in the apartment and I see this lady saying, Officer, I want this man removed from my house. And I look over and I see this big, muscular Chinese person from that Chinese. accent. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese. Yeah. 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 That was a Mandarin accent, wasn't it? I said, <laughs> I said what's your name? He said, my name is Wee Fuck I'm Young. <laughs> so anyway, he a very menacing figure. And I, I asked the lady, I said, who's paying the rent? She said, I pay the rent. So I motioned over to him. I was in good shape. I had my arms crossed like Mr. Clean. And I pointed at him. I said, you have to leave. So uh, he gets out of his seat. And he comes over to me and face to face. He crosses his arm. and He says, I ain't leaving. I said, listen, I'm telling you one time you have to leave. He said, I ain't leaving. So I reach in my back pocket. I had a big slap, a big lead slapper. <laughs> the it, sap. That's it, what Kenny talks and about. One, yeah. And one motion brought it across his head. Opened up his head. The guy went flying back on the couch. I walk over to him with a napkin. I start, you know, absorbing the blood off his head. And I said, are you going to leave now? He said, yes, sir, officer. I'm <laughs> leaving right away. <laughs> now, you can't do that anymore. No. <laughs> well, those, those fucking, Kenny gave me one of those slappers, man. I, I don't know where. It's like They're a illegal, hard leather right? thing. Well, the slappers were good. The slappers were good because the uh, jacks would put a hole in, in somebody's head. A slap, you you couldn't see you couldn't see the consequences. <laughs> but he was he was disrespecting the lady, so it was good that you did a good. No, thing. no, what he, he did, did was thing. disrespect me also. As a yeah. cop. In other words, I treated people fairly yes. and decently. And if I'm telling you to leave, and it's a high hazard, violent precinct, mm -hmm. and I'm saying please leave, and the man's saying I'm not going to leave, what are you going to do about it? Then were you yeah. allowed? Did, no? did, did your heart rate go up at all no. during that? No, I my heart rate my heart rate did, did not get up. I'll tell you another one where we went. In the, when I was in the 90th precinct. I'm thinking of the movie mo the montage, the clock is just circling. Yeah. So I cracked his fucking head. It's 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. If you would put the cop talk over the porn, this would be like a double-edged sword of oh, guys man. want this. You know, <laughs> exactly. Cracking him in the head. Twink, twink. You know, and where's that code? Oh, so I'll it. give you an example how we could use restraint. I went on a, a run years ago in Williamsburg, and when we got there, a guy was laying in the street, stabbed to death. And the people were telling us that the perpetrator was on the top floor. So my partner, Rocky, and I went to the top floor, kicked down the door, and there the guy was standing with a knife. So we, I could have shot him right on the spot, but we didn't. Uh, Rocky distracted him, and I got the knife out of his hand. We locked him up, <laughs> and we gave him over to the detectives. But, you know, we do use, re I did use restraint. How did I you distract to. him? Hey, hey, look at that. <laughs> he took out he his cock. shot him. <laughs> he, took, he, he took out his cock. All right? <laughs> I, I said, said it. it. I, said it. Out, boy. I did it. Hey, co he, did he you ever have to uh, shoot anybody? Or? Thankfully, no. Oh. Thankfully, no. Well, sometimes thankfully. Did you ever just sometimes wave it, it around just to... No. <laughs> Brandish. No. Brandish your weapon. <laughs> Were you there during the blackout? During the, yes. The, the, okay, that must have been a wild, crazy, wild west... In it New was. York, it was crazy, oh. right? Yeah, that was around 78, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that was wild. I, I think the, I think the most, I think the most uh, <laughs> scariest situation I went on is when we uh, we had to face a big mob, big mob riot. We're throwing bottles and rocks at us. More Vikings. Oh, Jews. Oh, the virus tour. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was, uh, this was a Latin <laughs> virus tour. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, 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 you did your time, didn't you? <laughs> virus right. tour. This was a Latin area of, uh, of Grand Avenue. I don't know if you ever heard of Grand Avenue in Williamsburg. This is a big Latin section. We wow. responded to disturbance and... And they were, responded to a disturbance. <laughs> what did they call you, like Captain Blanco? <laughs> <laughs> Where were you during the uh, crazy Eddie bust? <laughs> you know, you know that's funny because those are the customers that that I uh, catered to today. Yeah. Oh, really? Wait, so what about this disturbance? Crowd. Get get back to Grand uh, Avenue or whatever. No, so I'm just saying you you can go uh, on one hand uh, uh, rescuing somebody or saving somebody's life, and then on the other hand you can have bottles thrown at you. I mean, one time on a late tour, uh, we were coming out of a job and somebody threw a brick from God knows where and it crashed into the back of our windshield, just missing our heads. So it was a very exciting type of job. You can one minute face violence, one minute helping somebody, one minute solving a dispute. So it, well, you must have been on there during uh, Son of Sam also, right? Actually, I was, uh, yes, I knew the detective uh, who uh, handled that case. But again, that was not a matter for patrol. Yeah.
But they told told you to keep your eyes open, I'm sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You see a cock blocker lurking. <laughs> yeah. Fucking son of Sam, what a cock blocker. <laughs> the <laughs> ultimate cock blocker, yeah. They told us to keep our eyes open and our fly zip it, okay? <laughs> so you don't you, want that you, cock you, hanging out. You're comfortable around violence. Like You, you seem like a guy who's not uh, not one to shy away from it. I'm I'll not saying that in a bad I'll, way, either. I'll, I'll put, put it, it this way. Fighting. I'll put it this way. Uh, with my Sicilian <laughs> background, so to say, I could, no, I could treat somebody with respect and have a nice conversation. And if somebody attacks me or is violent toward me, I'm going to come at him the same way. So Please do not come to the comedy cellar. No, I, I don't think you I can take him. <laughs> yeah. you know who you He'll be blaming here. the you, table you behind him. Yeah. Yeah. You know what you need here would be funny, Lionel. Remember Lionel? Yes. He's great. Give yeah, some of the... Excuse me? Lying on the radio, dude? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I heard some of his tapes, uh, some of his uh, comedy. He's, he's great. Yeah, he was uh, He's one of the first guys to ever have me on television. Although my favorite yeah. comedian is Jackie Mason by that show my age. Jackie Mason? Jackie's funny. He's he good. Funny. Really? Oh, he is. I got two different pictures with Jackie Mason, and uh. both times he's looking the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Fucker. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one thing. My, the greatest experience that I've ever had, two experiences, two celebrities who I idolized, and I don't really care about celebrities. They could, was One was Mickey Mantle. Wow. And the other one was uh, Frank Sinatra. So when I was able to work in motion pictures, I worked with Frank on contract on Cherry Street and took a picture of him and I. And two years later, I saw him on the set of First Deadly Sin. So I took the picture over to Sinatra and I said, Mr. Sinatra, I worked with you on uh, contract on Cherry Street. Would you mind signing this? He was very gracious and signed the, uh, the autograph. He said, what's your name? I said, Lou. He said, for Lou, Frank Sinatra. And I still have that to to this day, so that's a cherished memory. And I also had the privilege of filming Mantle in his restaurant with Vice President Quayle, mm. which was great because I was hired by some congressman to film the two of them, the three of them together. So Quayle comes into Mantle's restaurant, and it's it's like Santa Claus. He Mickey, he like he was looking at Jesus or something well, like Quayle that. Quayle was like that. Uh, Quail, yeah, he looked at Mantle like it was God. So Mantle was very stern. And then this guy who hired me was like hiding in the corner. So I told him, I said, come on, come in the picture. I says, you know, everybody smile and look at the camera and say Yankees. And Mantle goes, Yankees? And he cracks up. And it was great just filming Mantle talking to Quail about his career and why he quit. And then all of a sudden he, he brings Quail over to another guest who was sitting in a restaurant. And it was Rocky Blyer, the Pittsburgh Steelers. So those are the two highlights. I, I filmed a lot of people over the years from Liza Minnelli to... Nice. Was, Jackie, it, was it before Jackie. the Botox, Liza? We saw her yesterday on television. She looks fucking horrible. Yeah, you Easy. know what this was, believe it or not? <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not, what this was was some very wealthy dude hired her for his 11th wedding anniversary at the Hotel Pierre. He must have paid her about a hundred grand or so just to sing for ten minutes. So, was Mickey Mantle didn't seem like Mickey didn't seem like he'd be impressed with anybody. No, he wasn't. He was looked a little annoyed at first, but then he he kind of warmed up the quail. That's fucking hilarious. The vice president just irritated him. Like, what? <laughs> no, actually, what he, what he did was, before I went over to Mantos, he was talking about the Gulf War. And when he sat down in the news conference, which I was filming, he said, my kids could care less wow. what I do every day, but I'm going to go see Mickey Mantle today. And they want a full report. So when I heard that in my mind, Mickey Mantle, I said, oh, this is fantastic. So I got an opportunity to, uh, to uh, film Mantle. You wow. Did you talk to him at all? I didn't really want to impose. I was there as a, uh, a producer, so I didn't yeah. really want to get involved with that. You know, I would have imposed. I would have sat on his lap, got a fucking photo. <laughs> yeah. Can I, I want. I have one question. Like uh, when you were a, a police officer, what the gun that you carried was what? Thirty-eight revolver. Right, but the, uh, and the gun they carry now is the nine, right? Yeah, that's that's the problem with these semi-automatic guns is that people say, Jesus, this cop shot this guy forty yeah, times. You have no control. What happens? What happens is is that they react to a dangerous situation. They perceive they're going to be attacked. Mm -hmm. And when they put pressure on this uh, on this gun, it's not like an old revolver where you go one, one, mm -hmm. one. You know, you put pressure and like 20 rounds come out. So you have, <laughs> you have three guys shooting. It's like, a, why did you shoot this guy with 100 rounds? When in reality, all it was was guys putting pressure and the rounds are flowing out much faster. That was the old days. You'd shoot bang, 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 right. bang. So if you shoot bang, bang, and a guy goes down, you stop. But on the other hand, if you're pulling that, that, squeezing that trigger and 10 rounds come out all at once from three different angles, in the next day it's the papers that the cops filled this guy with 40 rounds. And it, and it's right, a, it's not. It's I think while gun. you're assessing the damage that you've done to the guy, you're still shooting exactly. because yeah. you can. You know, it, it, you, you have a, a big enough magazine and you have a, well, a, a semi automatic. So you're, you're shooting, you're in that 
situation where you don't know. It's life or death. So you're assessing his health at the time. Is he down? Is he going down? Am I hitting him? Well, but you know, as you're doing that, you're still shooting at the big target. I don't think anyone in this room wants to die. And if you go on a situation where it's a dangerous situation... Huh? That's usually what you hear before someone dies. Yeah. I don't think any of you want to die. <laughs> well, what I, Am I right? So here's what? a proposition <laughs> for you. <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer you can't right, refuse. Right, here it is. Yeah. Oh, great. That was uh, delivered perfectly. Is. What, I'm alluding, what I'm alluding to is that, is that nobody wants to die. And if you're in a situation where it's life and death, and you get a description of a, of a so-called perpetrator, and he looks like a, this perpetrator, and he's acting in a suspicious way, you go to approach him, guns drawn, and you say, hey, put that down, or don't do and he reaches in to get a pack of cigarettes, you don't know that he's reaching for a pack of cigarettes, yeah. and if you repeatedly say, stop, halt, and he keeps going on with that movement, That's you're going to That's a dumbass move. It is a dumbass move, oh. but that's where your black partner would go, it ain't worth it, player. And he would <laughs> pull you back, right? But, uh, but unfortunately, unfortunately, the Sharptons of the world have to mm -hmm. make political hay out of this and take advantage of it. And, and unfortunately, the, the police have to suffer True. as a consequence. Wow. Well, how, let me ask you a question. How come they never say that, like, in the trial? Like, they hmm. never seem like that side of the story comes out where you talk, like, no one's ever explained... The, the the nine millimeter the way you just explained it so it actually makes sense well, for the I'm, other side of the argument. I'm sure the police commissioner and the police department's aware they conduct investigations via uh, IAD, uh, but the Sharptons of the world would never come out and say, "Hey, you know, it was justified," right. because it, it you know it just uh, it ruins their uh, view of who they're supposed to be. You know, they, if they played it fairly, they would say, "Oh, this guy was wrong." He was locked up, he went to jail, or this guy is innocent, and we apologize or we came to the wrong conclusion. It's just not in his benefit to come out and admit there was a mistake made on his part. <laughs> well, so, can what, to, what can I do for my abs? Can we go back to the porn. Lou's got yeah, damn good care. abs. I was watching, like, uh, like you have fucking, your abs really show, and I, I have trouble knocking off this well, extra weight. The, the way you work the abs, you got to be dedicated to. You have to, you have to make that. You have, yeah. I'll, I'll tell he's you, like a father. This, this guy like really is. Be your father. He's a renaissance <laughs> man. He's a cop. He's a video. He's a so if it's a gray sky at night, what does that mean? I'm going to tell. <laughs> I'm going to tell all you guys and all you listeners out there have a good abs. You got to look at the abs as like a baseball team. The way a pitcher is, you build your foundation around your pitching staff. All right, so I need a Dominican on my stuff. No, what, what I'm trying to say is a lot of Again. a lot of building a lot of uh, bodybuilders only concentrate on arms. They want a big chest, big arms, but they... And you look at them, they got tiny stick legs or a big belly stick. Benny Brand. Yeah. So I think, <laughs> I think bodybuilding should be renamed body sculpting. I think you're better off if you concentrate on the abs and then move out with to arms, back, chest, and so on and so forth and do it in a way which the body is supported in a healthy way. You don't overbuild joints or muscles. You, you build the body in a streamlined way. It gives you more mobility. And you use the abs as a starting point. And how many sit-ups a day do you do? I don't do sit-ups. I do all various types of machines, you know. And I use those machines in conjunction with Smith machines and other types of machines to work on the abs. I do, but take diet out is a very slap important. Slapstick. Yeah, you <laughs> can't. You can't eat like crap. No, you don't. Yeah, the biggest, really can't. The biggest, you can have great abs right. underneath a bunch of fat. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest killer of them all is bread. Is yeah. bread. Why is that? Yep. Because it uh, the, Stupid, it stores in the spread. body. It, 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 the caveman had a, a mechanism in the body where they didn't know when they were going to eat, so they would store the body would store uh, carbs and turn it into uh, fat, and uh, that's what happens to this day. Right. People sit on it behinds all day. They they they're not active, and when you eat a lot of bread, it gets stored in the body. So uh, don't eat as much bread. Uh, try to lay off the pasta and don't overeat. When you're full, stop eating. See, I actually eat until I'm shitting while I'm swallowing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I'm yeah. <laughs> Swallow, log push. Swallow, log push. Time to stop. <laughs> but when you were when you were on the force, were you like drinking and smoking and like living the life? You know, well, young you know young cop out there. You know, there was two types of cops when I was on a job. Uh, there was the married guys who needed the money for overtime. <clears throat> Right. And then there was the cops who did their job, but they didn't really need the, you know, the blood money. We used to call it. We used to make an arrest on a, a four to twelve shift, and then spend all day in court, and go back to work the next day where you had no sleep. So we used to give a lot of our so-called collars to those type guys, and we administer the type of justice we, that we had to do, and also make our share of arrests. But we more of so-called ladies' men, right? You know, 
So I, w- I think I, I, I was in that second category. But the drinking and smoking, I only did at nightclubs. I never drank and smoked during the week. Mm-hmm. I always took care of myself, and I always did things in moderation. That's his movie right there. You, Rack you, and head you, and fucking. That's right. Like SWAT yeah, meets yeah. boogie nights. That's his movie right there. <laughs> Were you also like the kind of cop that's like, I'm also on the uh, po- uh, police benevolence to teach the kids how to box team? Like That's always like a, a cop's cop. <laughs> Down at the Y? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. That no, gray like, on gray Kids, sweatshirt. judo is the way to go. No. Forget crack. <laughs> well... <laughs> Chest Rockwell. Yeah. <laughs> we got to take a break. So, Lou, are we uh, promoting this tape? Are we getting it shut down? What are we doing? Yeah, what do, what do we want to do, do with this? What do you want from us? Because we have a lot of power here. Well, what I want, what I think that my wife is uh, leaning toward now, I mean, because of the popularity of it, we didn't expect that at 57 I'm going to be a porn star. And <laughs> she certainly didn't expect to get involved in this. So, but the, the results accidental are, porn star. Accidental <laughs> porn stars. The results have been so overwhelming that you know what are you going to do? You might as well accept it for what it is and roll with it. That's 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 uh, uh, that means plug it. Yeah, are you? Uh, <laughs> it's called uh, obviously from the red light district. Amy Fisher caught on tape. And uh, she looks really good. Yeah, okay. Did you give the address, by the way? The boy address. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. Oh. Yeah, come on. Cash come out of with you. All well, you have to do is go to www.amyfisher.com. Amy uh, That's it. You can go to. And uh, the cover's even very sexy. She has this little red boy shorts, which I'm a big fan of. I like them, too. Oh, yeah. that was a good one when she uh, yeah. she was against the uh, dresser let there. And, let me tell you something. Uh, she, the, is, she is hot. Built like a brick shit house. Yeah, really wow. sexy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's your wow. wife. He's in great about. shape. <laughs> wow. It's great. You got to buy this just to watch. And it's weird to say because you have it. Just to watch Lou get blown. Because he doesn't. Fucking Lou rules. He doesn't move. He just, he just stands there like a statue getting blown. Because <laughs> he's, he's still listening for uh, perpetrators. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Once again, that's Amy Fisher, Alpha, Mango, Yank, anything? AmyFisher.com. <laughs> <laughs> tango, Tango. <laughs> it's long, too. It's not like it's some fucking 10 minute tape, man. There's a, 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 a lot. lot of fucking that's in this tape. There's a lot film. of scenes. There's like a head, and, there's like, and then it just keeps going to different stuff. Well, so I've been told, I mean, by Red Light themselves, and also from reading on uh, reviews on the uh, porn sites, that it's the, it's the best celebrity tape ever made. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, when you look at China's tape, uh, it was awful, the sex uh, wasn't good, you just yeah. wanted to see, you know, what, look, what he should have done, though, after every sex scene, you should have told a police story. That's yeah, what he was saying. Oh, you said yeah, that? Bill, yeah, I'm sorry. Bill was saying, I'm you sorry, know. Bill. Well, that, that could be a good... I'm with uh, you, though, on that one. That could oh, be Dave, a good Dave, said, Dave, Dave said it. it. Yeah. That could be a good Look foundation for a, uh, <laughs> a TV show, right? Yeah. Sex and police or something like that. I love it. Are you going to get Amy on our show or what? Tomorrow, Tomorrow yeah. She's going to come on. She'll, she'll, she'll talk to you from the house. That'd oh, be that's cool. That's pretty cool. Okay. All right, well, the tape is Amy Fisher caught on tape, and it really is a... It's fucking. Uh, it's good. I suppose you gotta watch it also just to see. There's some really good Hummer scenes, and you gotta watch it just to see Lou banging with his left leg up in the air. It really is a feat that of seems acrobatics. great. And uh, the whole country can laugh along at the Long Island accent. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, well, wait a second. So My accent's a Brooklyn accent. Yeah, yours is Brooklyn. <laughs> She's got Amy's, the Long Island it, accent. That was so funny. My hair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got to brag out of pee. Yeah, we got to yeah, pee. That's a also, good one. don't forget, David tells a uh, special man, uh, uh, a it's great HBO Captain special. Captain Miserable. Is this, uh, this Saturday at 10 o'clock. <laughs> so if you're not going to be home because you're going to be out, at least DVR it. And, and, and uh, fucking Sweet Bill Burrow beat Caroline's this Aww. weekend. There's nothing better than tapping a load and then putting in a little comedy. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> exactly. Oh, it's still soaking up in your belly button. You fucking pop on a yeah. special. That's right. when you get that urge to read, usually. You know? It's like, I gotta read more. Right, we yeah, gotta, by the way, by the way, fellas, yeah, yeah, fellas look, you, get, you get paid to do this for a living? Whoa. Yeah, I know. Oh, and that's you got a job All right, somebody's great. gonna... I love it's fun. <laughs> it's silly, I know. All right, my friend, you just crossed the line. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Lou, thank you. It was a uh, pleasure, thank man. You. Thank you. How do you say your last name? Bellera. 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 Hey, Bellera. That's gotta be the name, be the name of that new sex move. Lou, how do you say that name? Like a Fisher. Dot <laughs> 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 com. All right, we'll be back in just a bit. It's Opie and Anthony. <laughs> and we're back here at XM Satellite Radio, having a lot of fun today. Lou was the uh, he was the real deal, man. And, and Paul, as he's leaving, Paul goes, "Okay, Joe." Yeah, he called him Joe. <laughs> I think it's three letters. <laughs> Way to go, Poe. Wow. He goes, uh, yeah, what did he say exactly? Way to go, Joe? Okay, Joe. Okay, Joe. Yeah, See you next Lou. time. I heard you turn around and went, Lou! Yeah, Lou was great. I tell had to leave, too, but he had, a, he had a really good time, man. He was hilarious. 
That was okay, a long Joe. time coming, man. We've been trying to get a tell on for a long time. Yeah. How funny was he? Man? He was uh, hilarious. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, hilarious. he did a great job. All right, we got this, and then uh, we're going to do line of the day. Get the fuck oh, out of here. Heck, get the heck out of here. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey, hey, guess the sound, by the way. Side. Guess the sound. Mm. Uh, That's hard. Hold on. For callers. You win. How about this? We're going to give away a pair of my New Year's Eve tickets to whoever can call in and guess the sound if you live in New York or Jersey. Okay? Um. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Any, second Any second now, those phones are going to start lighting up. There's not yeah. one goddamn call. Pair of my tickets for the fucking Long Island. Uh. Oh. All right, listen, we got this news report from uh, 1998. <laughs> There's not one call up there. They're slowly calling. Oh, there there's a, there's there a delay. So the, the, those phones will be lit in God any moment now. All right. Uh, <laughs> news report time. <laughs> we got one. <laughs> we got one. Uh, news reports on water powered car. This goes back to 1998. Uh, Lou, uh, Lou, Jesus. Now Lou. I'm Lou. Uh, uh, Bill, Joe. Bill appreciates. Joe. Bill appreciates <laughs> alternative, uh, you know, fuel and all that crap. So. Yeah. We play this one for you today, Bill. Or do we? I saw you fucking Amy Lou. <laughs> 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 your cum dribbled out on your balls, Lou. <laughs> okay. Okay, put your cock in her pussy. <laughs> Get a blowjob from Pookie. Fucking <laughs> Ted Knight. Ah, uh, fuck. Uh, yes, yeah. it, yes, it's Jimmy's medicine. Jesus, yeah. everyone got it, Jimmy. Sorry. No, I know that, but who's the first one that called? The, you got to give things to the guy. Oh, I went. Do we? I went to uh, instant feedback. Bill K from Philly. He's a regular. You should just give him a pair of tickets. Well, well, Bill K will show up. He'll absolutely get them. Yeah, Bill K. Uh, leave some. Leave a cell number or something. And we'll Not for me, for Travis. Them. He'll call you, but you will get tickets for the show. All right, here we go. Uh, water. This goes back to 1998. The top our news here at 6 o'clock, an age-old dream becoming a reality. A local inventor has discovered a way, hear this, to use water to run your car. It's a major breakthrough that will no doubt make motorists happy. And as Ralph Robinson explains, the Pentagon is also showing lots of interest in this project. Are they? <laughs> I'm sure they always are. are they? Where does this guy live? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the yeah, why don't you come in here and uh, show us your little invention? Yeah. And drop a J dam into his house and <laughs> just blow him up. <laughs> hey, I don't know what happened. Hey, what happened? Yes. The CIA is very interested. Yeah. Well, this is 1998. Oh yeah, where, where are we at? Where's, where is this guy now? Where's he at? Where's the water power car? He's in Guantanamo. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a terrorist. I swear. We got started. Swear out. to God, I'll never invent anything ever again. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, not another toe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play an Escalade. Just let me out of here. <laughs> let me leave with all my fingers gone. <laughs> uh, I never said I had a problem with oil. It was just a hobby. Water's for <laughs> drinking. Water's just for drinking. <laughs> what are you going to do with that power saw? Oh, God. Yeah, he has to write a thousand times, water's for drinking, gas is for driving. Water's yeah. for drinking, gas is for driving. What is that torture with the wet boarding? What do they oh, call it? yeah, That's water a, boarding. Uh, yeah. Is this what you want to put yeah. in your car? It yeah. is. This works real good, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> They pull him out of the drum. <laughs> you imagine if they did that in gas? Oh, oh shit. Can you imagine getting soaked in gas? That would be horror, that horrible would suck. and horrific. Especially if they kept your eyes open with fucking things. Oh, that would sting, I bet. That would sting. Sting. That would sting. That would hurt sting. You. All right, hey, let's, uh, we got to start over because I don't know how to work these CD players. What happened if you got jerked That's off okay. with gas? <laughs> oh, shit. This is a great Ow. contest. Like, who could hold out the longest? Oh, all right. New contest that we can't do. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll get a bunch of Jerking people. They have to jerk off with nothing but gasoline. How <laughs> 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 fuck with that What do you get you? The, the, the pain or the fumes? I mean, there's a whole other thing I think the going. fucking pain because gas would offer zero lubrication. I would for a second. And, and so you'd chafe. Oh. You'd start chafing. And, and once that happens, that gasoline. And then the smell. That gasoline yeah. smell <laughs> smells like blue balls. Chlorine. Jerk it off with chemical. Why don't, why don't you figure out like all the different things? Can you jerk off with? Mm. Let's see. Uh, motor oil. Motor oil. Bleach. Probably could with motor oil. 
But um, don't get any in the tip, and come quick. Jello. Uh, bleach, no. Beach sand? <laughs> that should be a contest. The f- wackiest thing you can jerk off in front of us with. <laughs> we got to start. Yes, wet I love grain sandpaper. We got to start thinking oh, you go up here. too. Yeah, that wet, dry sandpaper. Uh huh. So Weirdest it leaves thing. a nice shiny cock. In case you didn't know what sandpaper was, I went like this, Anthony. Yeah, so I know. You rubbed, you rubbed your fingers <laughs> on your fist. <laughs> can we go back to the news report, please? Oh, I forgot. Listen to the old school Where news guy with the latest invention. <laughs> the top of our news here at 6 o'clock. An age-old dream becoming a reality. A local inventor has discovered a way, hear this, to use water. Becoming a reality. Sure it is. Well, the future says, there you go. try again. Let me drink some of my petroleum for yeah. the way home. That newscaster was Some of my fuel. <laughs> here in the future, we say, uh, no, it didn't happen. Try your car. It's a major breakthrough that will no doubt make motorists happy. And as Ralph Robinson explains, the Pentagon is also showing lots of interest in this project. What? Water has always been considered a precious commodity, but Stan Meyer's invention may make it even more valuable. The late Stan he has Myers. developed what's called a water fuel cell. Can you it has him? taken the place of his old gas tank. I was, I was right behind you. You got it. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Stan Meyer. Stan He's got some news I on I guarantee him. he's dead. He died in a car accident. And it's something a heart attack, a car accident. Wait, 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 wait. Danny, you have the answer? Yeah. All okay. right, hold on. Let's try. <laughs> Let's try. Hold on. This hold on. guy is so dead. Go. It's not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> so dead. So fucking dead. Not even just dead. He's so dead. Okay. Let's... Someone bought the patent. Nothing ever happened. And he had a heart attack. I want to say yeah. that something weird in his past suddenly came up. They don't even need to kill you anymore. They I'm going to just... say a knife fight in a bar. No, I, I think that Stan... He was fucking, uh... Let me think. This... He disappeared. No, it's gotta be a car crash. Nah. It just has to be, like, they cut his brake lines or He something. fell down the stairs, and his family wondered why he had handcuffs on his hands and feet. <laughs> they, they did the kitty porn thing to him. Uh, they switched his uh, hard drive. Yeah, that's what they did. A character assassination. That's what they usually go with two inventors. Died in prison? Uh, uh, Danny, what do we got on Stan? Well, uh, Mr. Meyer was mysteriously poisoned. <laughs> Holy shit! Get the fuck out no, he wasn't. Here. And the poison uh, caused an aneurysm in his brain. <laughs> and he died leaving a restaurant. <clears throat> wow. I say a theory. Oh, man, Bill. Oh, shit. You say, I, I'm oh, with you. I'm, I'm so with you I'm on this one, Bill. You. I'm Don't telling you. Don't fuck with the government. The last. That's not the government. It's the oil companies who. They're more telling. powerful. Yeah, they're. They were, yeah. It's wow, like, they don't... they fucking got him. Yeah, they got him. Wow. And what happened to his big fucking? Well, the 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 brother of uh, Stan claims that uh, I think like a week or two after his death, people broke into where he had this uh, this water powered dune buggy and just just stole it for <laughs> pieces. And he doesn't know what happened to this guy. Oh <laughs> come on! And, and, and his brother's too stupid. Like he he you know. Talent like that probably is just one person. Yeah, it was just him. Another one guy, like, one he guy. Watches Sports Center, right? He doesn't yeah. give a fuck, right? Oh, yeah, he had a water powered. You yeah, don't see that like that guy. The... You ever like you go on there and you see like some of the inventions that were that were just suppressed, and then they used to just always say that the person was crazy, like that guy Tesla right out there. Yeah, oh, Tesla's like, l- like, lunatic. All this wireless technology, he came up with the shit. I guess in the 1800s, and you could actually you just he, there was these big ugly things, but you'd put it in, and he somehow tapped in. The electricity or whatever, and you could everyone could have had it for free, and then they <laughs> like Wi-Fi electricity. Yeah, and then they just went up and hey, that's real interesting. Yeah, put him in a fucking headlock. You know, <laughs> he's crazy. He's talking about force fields and, and right, aliens. He's out of his fucking mind, and they just totally destroyed him <laughs> as a human being. And like 150 years later, now and Edison gonna... was their guy. Hey, Thomas Edison, wires Dude, goes it, to a power station. You pay for it. And it is all bullshit. I was in uh, my my apartment in L.A. I was getting free internet right mm-hmm. and then out of nowhere all of a sudden i wasn't getting it so then i had to pay for the shit so then the guy shows up and he puts it on and he goes uh he goes all right i need to adjust this i'm like what's the matter i'm getting uh I'm getting a good signal he goes yeah but it's too strong it's too strong so because he doesn't want anybody else to steal all oh, right gotcha. i don't think it's that big fu- big a fucking deal <laughs> we're just all like they don't teach you anything it, it, what do they teach you? They teach you how to add, they teach you how to be a fucking drone that goes and sits in a cubicle and I give me, I give me one week vacation coming up. That's what that's what they want you. The last thing they want you to be you know down in the cellar like that fucking guy in Back to the Future trying to come up with shit because <laughs> they're gonna whack you. That's Dr. what happens. Brown. Yeah, all of a sudden everything starts tasting like almonds. 
<laughs> you just yeah, you, fall over. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> smell burning hair. Let's go back to the. That's it. Uh, let's go back to the news story from 1998. Uh, oh. More on Stan Meyer. Yeah. It has taken the place of his old gas tank. The water fuel cell breaks down water molecules into oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen is used to run his dune buggy. And I don't care if you use rainwater, well water, city water, ocean water. If you don't have any fresh water, go ahead and use snow. If you don't have any snow available to you, then use salt water because there's no adverse effect to the fuel cell. And the oil company said, here's some poison water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here you go. So what, did you water, in, sir? In the Pentagon is interested... You know there was oh. some guy in there like that fucking like De Niro's Al Capone. I want him dead. I want his <laughs> yeah. house burned down. I want that fucking buggy here in ten minutes. I want him pissing on his fucking ashes. <laughs> hey shit, dude, it's this one. Yeah. You know what kills me is it's so That's fucking. Bad. It's so fucking obvious. It's just like that. Really is. Like, just, and you know, I would sit here and argue with Bill Burr about this. This one's and go, too this good. is bullshit. That I can't I believe am they so killed him. With you I, here. I, I thought that they were just going to go the not the, only did destroy they, his character. Not, not did they, they kill him. Not only. Did, oh, that's horrible. Not only did uh, they kill him, we knew that he was dead. Had to be dead. I I never heard of this guy before. Anyone Poison. else? Poison. I right. can't believe the I second part be... of the story. <laughs> Meyer started working on this project four years ago. He's not a scientist. He isn't even a chemist. In fact, he never graduated from college. Uh, Myers was determined, he says, to design something to protect this country from oil embargoes. Uh, and we have calculated that if we take the dune buggy from Los Angeles to New York, we would roughly use 22 gallons of water. The Pentagon flew a lieutenant colonel in last week to look at Myers' invention. There's talk of possibly using it in the Star Wars defense program and to run army tanks. Myers is currently perfecting a water fuel cell for cars. It will cost about $1,500. He says it won't need any maintenance, and you won't have to replace it. Wait, It'll be at least two years before the fuel system goes into mass production. The date happens will be one the fuel industry hates, but it'll put a smile on the face of those who've had to say at one time or another, fill her up. This is oh, oh, fill her up, he just, all right. He wrote his death sentence right there. <laughs> oh, that was it. God, this now, is, knowing I'm, he's dead, it's so obvious they flew in a colonel. A lieutenant colonel was flown in, and this is it's like that Brady Bunch yeah. episode when they <laughs> yeah, saw the, the UFO. No, this has got to be older than '98 because they said the Star Wars defense. This has got to be older than '98. Did we get the UFO? Oh, there you go. It's no, a I, UFO. No, it's swamp gas. Everything I found oh, referenced 1998. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Dude, that he is basically amazing. came up with a way. To, to make, kill him, to, to make to the, get the people murdered. who are making the most money in this country to go broke. Broke. I've discovered a way to fuck over the Illuminati. And <laughs> Come on over to my house. <laughs> That's it. You're done. You're fucking the done. Illuminati. <laughs> and there's no way there. You couldn't just prevent people from grabbing a bucket of water from somewhere. <laughs> You know, so they can't, they can't capitalize it. The oil companies can't go, okay, now we're the water company. No the number, way the number way, one way to control people is if you control the energy. They figured it out years ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. centuries ago. Whatever. We need it. Wow. So, yeah, so they got everybody. So if this guy, you know, it's just like, hey, you want to go to Connecticut? I got a bottle of water there, huh? <laughs> Yeah, it's nothing. That's and then he would say, it's going to be a day, you know, bad day for the oil companies, but <laughs> a good day for people that want to say, fill her up. But before that day, there's going to be a bad day for Stan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's going to start with the guy shooting a little dart into his <laughs> neck from across the fucking it's gonna, room. It's going to start with liquid diarrhea and end I'm with <laughs> death. I'm surprised they didn't take out his brother, too. Oh, yeah. Those, that's the kind of thing. They that probably really, he must have been some kind of Billy Carter moron motherfucker that they just figured ah, there's alone. no chance. He's retarded. Just give him some pennies to play with. All those guys. I used to bit my act about that shit. We, we used to you'd see these guys on the news. They figured out how to make their, their truck run on like ketchup or something. And they, they always show it. And then you just never see never the guy hear again. about him anymore. The <laughs> uh, companies are really looking into this, taking yeah. a strong interest. So uh, what's the weather going to be like this weekend? <laughs> and it just goes away. End and then of the story. That, that guy's at, like a fat burger. Like six months later, all of a sudden just clutching his chest, <laughs> <laughs> he just falls over. <laughs> That motherfucker was just like, and it's going to cost next to nothing. It never has to be replaced. And good news, a colonel's being flown in. L.A. Do to you know New York means? on a fucking thimble of water, and a lieutenant colonel said, and an assassin are being flown in he said, from the Pentagon. He said everything wrong. Everything. <laughs> Wait, you want to? Let's hear that again. I got to hear the end of that. Dude, that meant every time, it? every time it? it rained, you <laughs> you're, just you're put just... a bucket outside, and you could drive <laughs> to Wyoming. Do whatever you want. Run your house. I'm, 
It's just saying. because it runs a car doesn't mean it can't create energy to and this, heat your house and run anything. Dude, I'm going to tell you, and that's why we're headed towards disaster, because the only way to ever make any of this shit change is there's going to be blood spilled <laughs> like you've never seen. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I can't fucking wait. I can't well, wait. Well, Jesus Christ, you're, you're, you're loaded for bear, man. You're, you're ready I for it. I am right. waiting for... I don't care what kind of war it is. Put whatever word in front. Oil, race... Uh, uh, well, that's about the only two. Why don't we... <laughs> get the bell ready. Uh, ring the bell every time this uh, this stand says something. Uh, that exactly. that got the Pentagon's ear? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Here we go. I don't think... Uh, hold on, hold on. Well, what, do you got something better? I think that yeah, bell's going to break. the bell. I think the bell's going to break by the time yeah. you get to the end of this. How about whammy sounds? No, no I think I got... Dan, uh, how, did you, how did you find that, man? Oh, That's okay. great. Uh, uh, this clip was just floating around the other day. I just thought it was so funny. <laughs> you know, because obviously, you know, I, I was laughing at the same thing that you guys uh, are right. now. So. You got something good? What is it? Yeah. Let me hear it. All right, this will happen every time. <laughs> and that's the assassin. <laughs> yeah, the assassin like practicing uh, with a target of Stan. Stupid in the Stan bowel, in the bowels of the Pentagon. Right, the here's, dope. here's that same story again. Listen for all the things he probably shouldn't have said. The top our news here at six o'clock. An age-old dream becoming a reality. A local inventor has discovered a way. Hear this: to use water to run your car. It's a major breakthrough that will no doubt make motorists happy. And as Ralph Robinson explains, the Pentagon is also showing lots of interest in this project. Water has always been considered a precious commodity, but Stan Meyer's invention may make it even more valuable. He has developed what's called a water fuel cell. It has taken the place of his old gas tank. The water fuel cell breaks down water molecules into oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen is used to run his dune buggy. I don't care if you use rainwater, well water, city water, ocean water. If you don't have any fresh water, go ahead and use snow. If you don't have any snow available to you, then use salt water because there's no adverse effect to the fuel cell. <laughs> <laughs> if you're really desperate, empty the ice, the ice cube tray. <laughs> Anything, spit in it. You'll take you to fucking Florida. Or lay a bunch of cactuses uh, out and put plastic, plastic. in a rock over it. <laughs> <laughs> you like it. Holy shit. Oh, I'm kidding. So dead. Can you come up with uh, uh, an, another way where you could even. I'm trying to think. Air. How, you, how, you, how, you, how can you top. Air. Getting Oxygen. killed that, that quickly. That is the worst thing he could have <laughs> said. The only people that weren't impressed were people that lived in, like, New Mexico and Arizona. <laughs> wow, <laughs> holy shit. He fucked up so badly. The, so dead. The, he just, go, just the, go to a mosque in the Middle East and just yell, fuck Allah, and, <laughs> yeah. and you'll, live, you'll live longer. That's pretty his, much it. His invention would basically collapse our economy. Yeah. Basically what would happen. People would be driving to no jobs. Right. The economy or anything. Would be, it would yeah, just, but the amazing thing is that invention, them. as long as it continued to rain, you, we could still drive around bitching about the economy. <laughs> They would just build a fucking roof yeah. over the United States a weather and machine. collect yeah, a weather machine. A weather All machine. right, now we got to break out our fucking weather machine we've had for years. We knew we would need this eventually. Dude, hey, and you know he just gave it, them Colonel. all the information they wanted because he oh, probably yeah. viewed them. Oh, this is the United States government. I feel important. This is great. <laughs> Given over, <laughs> given his only blueprints, <laughs> his only copy of his. What's his fucking name? Stan, Stan Myers. Myers. Yeah, or my. Yeah. Um, Mr. Myers, hi. Yeah, uh, you think we could meet tonight for dinner? Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, it's Lieutenant Colonel um, Smith. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll meet tonight for dinner. Look, um, don't don't tell anyone about this. Your family or anyone. Yeah, how many just show up alone. Can you take a taxi and not your own car? And how many copies of uh, the blueprints do you have? Yeah, you got the blueprints and, and the keys to where you keep the doom buggy. <laughs> It's really fascinating. <laughs> yeah, we're fascinated with it. You're a great American. <laughs> All right, here's the second half. Uh, you got? You're, you're ready? Oh, of course. Everything he said that maybe he oh. should have said, you'll hear the gunshot. Myers started working on this project four years ago. He's not a scientist. He isn't even a chemist. In fact, he never graduated from college. Myers was determined, he says, to design something to protect this country from oil embargoes. And we have calculated that if we take the dune buggy from Los Angeles to New York, we would roughly use 22 gallons of water. The Pentagon flew a lieutenant colonel in last week to look at Myers' invention. There's talk of possibly using it in the Star Wars defense program as run army tanks. 
Myers is currently perfecting a water fuel cell for cars. It will cost about $1,500. He says it won't need any maintenance, and you won't have to replace it. It'll be at least two years before the fuel system goes into mass production. The day it happens will be one the fuel industry hates, but it'll put a smile on the face of those who've had to say at one time or another, fill her up. Wow. 1500 bucks. 1500 bucks. A drop in the bucket, quite literally. 22 what? gallons. What's a gallon of water cost? 3000 $2,000. They times, find a way to get AIDS into most of the water. <laughs> times 22. We had to put AIDS in the water. Uh, you could have well. driven across the country for about 30 bucks. And you use up the hydrogen, and all that exhausts out, I guess, is oxygen. So and it, it's clean. It's and, completely and, clean. And it's funny you say how much does water cost. When this story came out, water was still v very much free. Sounds like a bunch of fat very cats much out free. there. Wow. Yeah. That guy committed suicide by knowledge. Well, you know that's what, we, what it was. You know, uh, what, you know what we got to do in honor of Stan today. You do know, right? What? Lock up your sons, lock up your daughters. Death is on the street, and it is called water, water, oh. water. <laughs> Hell no to H two O. Hell no to H two O. Oh, I forgot about this. Hell no to H two O. Hell no to H two O. Worse than cocaine. You know it's overrated. I'm talking about hydration. Rather have a can full of carbonation. So pick up a soda. Don't be a coward. Water is worse Somebody than milk wrote. that turns sour. Everybody knows cola gives you power. Parody. Water's only good oh, for taking awful. a shower. Morning zoo type show. So now I must bow my head and pray to the soda gods. All love in so We look like assholes right now, right. man. <laughs> hey, uh, this is coming in from New Hampshire. Chris K, thank you. He says, good news. Hmm? Uh, Steve Meyer. Oh, okay. Steve Meyer, Stan's twin brother, lives. Ah. He's into the same technology. He stays very low key because he wants to live. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we ought to try to find him. Same technology. He's probably figuring out how to make cars use fucking, like, more gas. <laughs> more gas. <laughs> yeah, right, right. There's, there's a new gas. It's, it's fucking, it, it feels like a brick. They have to drop a lot of it into your heavy car. <laughs> Fucking Steve Meyer's a cunt that he's sold out. <laughs> not only are we not contacting Steve Meyer, I uh, strongly suggest that we cut this part of the show out of the replay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. We we uh, don't want any problems. Cause, cause a lieutenant like, is coming? A, yeah. uh, I mean, a, a lieutenant colonel is coming to see us? Because like Lou eloquently said a little earlier, uh, who here wants to die? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know. yeah, but I don't think they don't give a shit about it. We're just No, nah, we idiots. can't come it's up like, with it. But if you actually came up with it, Wow. If I ever came in and you're like, so Bill, what do you got going on? You're not going to lose it. <laughs> I, I was messing out. with my blender last night, right? And all of a sudden. And look outside what I drove up in. Yeah. Ran uh, on yogurt. <laughs> 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 That'd be the last time you saw me. <laughs> Where did Bill go? He, he just, I don't know. He just, he just. Let's do line of the day and get the fuck out. Language, yeah. oh, please. Norton's going to be at the North Fork Theater. On Long Island, of course he is. Year's Eve. Nice. And uh, I think the words get out that uh, we might do a little thing at uh, FH if oh, people good, are man. looking uh, for somewhere to go after your show. Yeah, I want to because so many times I start drinking, do what people want to do afterwards, which is why I wanted to do it like that. I haven't checked one with of my these brother, days. I got to, I got to get there. out to that place. That place is like legendary in my head. Oh, yeah. I've heard it so many times. I think mm -hmm. you're gonna say, you "Gotta go see Norton's show." I swear to God, oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, come on, you, you know, I'd be right there with the Jimmy Norton sweatshirt on. You got the hoodies out yet? I know, I really am fucking just all disgusting. I'll put my hand on anything. <laughs> Look, Dude, I told thing... you, I, I read his book. It's fucking hilarious. It's great. Oh, thank you. It's fucking hilarious. I read your book. I read it in three days. That pumpkin, a love story is my favorite one. Oh, yeah. Oh. How you ever thought that she was going to enjoy that Cost story? Cost a relationship, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jimmy. so North North Fork Theater New Year's tickets on sale now. F H yep. Riley's possibly afterwards. Well, at least uh, I'm sure people will end up going that way. Absolutely. Bill Burr's at Caroline's this weekend. It's Thursday yes. through Sunday. Bill might come back tomorrow because we don't get him often because he's an L A boy now. Mm. Yep. Art the of the Topless man. is going to be playing at the uh, infamous uh, Baby Fuck Party tomorrow at Bar Nine. Oh, very cool. Oh, oh can I go huge. to that? 
Yeah. I gotta, fuck fuck, yeah. Oh, no, I gotta go away fucking for gigs. Yeah. What's the baby fuck? It's angel fucking baby girl? Yeah. It's what's gonna the, be a big... What's the occasion? No fucking occasion. He's it's come up with just a fuel cell. Hang out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie B. Gonna be down there. What about Fez? Fez. What about Fez? Fez. Fez. What about... Fez's homies invented a uh, way to um, run a car. Off of cat piss, from what I hear. He's not very happy with How funny cat. would it be to invent a car that you could run on your own cum? <laughs> <laughs> Just people jacking but off no, on the side of the road. No, it worked the same. You needed as much as regular gasoline. <laughs> like you have to that jack is not economical. You'd have to have a lot of cum. There'd be fucking homeless milking machines <laughs> no, yeah. they'd have all those, over the place. They'd have those phony, like, vagina things. <laughs> From uh, from a blow up doll, yeah. right, right where you insert the gas nozzle. You just you gotta fuck, fuck your car, your car. <laughs> <laughs> every morning. Ellen's dancing. Oh, Ellen, <laughs> let she's her wearing, go. She's wearing a suit. Hey, she got a big uh, scoop yesterday, though. She talked to the president That's on right. her show. Big deal, phony bitch. She should have talked to him. She what is happening to this country? Look at above. You got fat people fighting on Jerry Springer. The and fights we got are back with A Jerry. bunch of fucking look at these women thinking they're <coughs> Stop it, you fat fucking pig. I know. Look at this audience. Her Love dancing thing fucking sucks. And now do the table thing. Who enjoys it? Come on, this straddle guy? the table. You know what the worst part of it is? Is she's almost good. Which this is, is worse than horny. being terrible. Here, here she goes. This is a new thing. Ooh, this uh, is I love to put a uh, pussy. That's the oh, first time balls have been near her pussy. <laughs> <laughs> there, were, <laughs> there were little Christmas balls on the table. That's how to do the uh, limbo across the oh, table. Oh, all right. Or the opposite that's limbo. Stupid. Or, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. 12 days of giveaways. Oh. Line of the day brought to you by BodogFantasy.net. Free life scoring, stats, bios, and news that will help you win big this season in fantasy I don't know football. What to do with that. Fantasy football is just about over. People do know that, right? It mean? ends before the season ends. She's so uncomfortable. Yeah, we might need some new copy. Yeah, you need new copy. Because mm. uh, we're going to look stupid. Fantasy football is just about over. They they end before the season. Oh, I thought much. they were just for some reason pretty they weren't going to have it anymore. Uh, BodogFantasy.net. Here's a runner-up line of the day. Now, that's what they told you. It's going to be a lot of hands-on. Hands-on the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and have, they, the have they given you the speech, you know, the make-believe straight speech yet? Or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or uh, maybe they... Hey, wow. Look at that. Uh, very good. Uh, here's another runner-up line of the day. I found a fucking <laughs> condom in my, in my parents' house. I was, I was living with my parents when I was 15, and I found a floating rubber in the toilet. Wow. Why do you just stick it in her ass so I don't have to see uh. it? <laughs> <laughs> that was a great line, man. Thank you. I remember when I found my dad's condoms for the first time. He was a big boy. He had the extra... Oh, Jesus. Extra I large hear in that. his top drawer. Really? Yeah. Doing a little not snoop want, and I found his condoms. Ugh. Not want to hear that. I didn't, well, I didn't find for? one in the toilet bowl though. Doesn't matter. You didn't need to. You found them in the package. I didn't. I didn't pick it up and measure it. <laughs> yeah, right. How big my dad's hog is. Went all the way down to my tonsils. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what were magnums called back then? I don't remember. I just knew. Well, maybe it was Negroes. A <laughs> they called them yes. glam bags. <laughs> You know, <laughs> they just called it that. Condoms with a picture of Tom Bosley on them. <laughs> you know what? I bet you it was a regular condom. I bet Tom Bosley, he's got like a fat one. <laughs> just a fat, stubby one. He's got a he's got a good thickness. Just a fat, stubby. I think it was a regular condom, but I was just a little a little thing that I just thought it was, wow, how, how, what? Hmm. Really? <laughs> you know? What were you looking for in there? Yeah, really. I really don't remember. Money. Probably money. Yeah, I was always. I used to steal for the, the change and a few dollars here. Yeah, and yeah it was of probably you gotta money. Do as a kid. Seriously. All right, here's another runner-up line of the day. Number four on the list is Fifty Cent, bulletproof rapper. Fifty Cent is involved in a web of corruption, double crosses, and shady deals that lead him on a bloody path hmm. through New York's uh, drug underworld. And what's the game about? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Anthony, that was just fresh. Oh, turnabout is fair play. Everybody was very quick today. <laughs> very quick. Yes. Was good. Who's that? Oh, Jenna Bush. Right. That's from yesterday. She looks like her father. Um, That'd be weird. She looks right in between. She looks a little bit like yeah, mom and dad. Definitely. I see the mom in there, too. I, she know, has this George's was, this eyes. Was definitely pre planned, though, because, uh, you know. They're not going to let the president's number show up on the fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, on their fucking... <laughs> on their phone bill. <laughs> Come yeah, on. Did she star 6-7 in the White House? Who's this? Do you want to hear this? Because we do have the audio. Yeah, I heard it. We heard it before. We didn't throw it on the air, though. Oh, it was That's really good. 
Do we do it or no, we'll get the fuck out of here? Who cares? We have another runner-up line or is this another runner-up line of the day? <laughs> Please handle that in a very professional manner and they were very cool and laid back in what they did, but the pictures uh, portrayed them as like a bunch of bumbling idiots, so... Did you have a black partner who was too old for things? Actually, I tell had so many good lines today. Yeah, but fucking Lou didn't understand when people were laughing. We, it's like Lou, shut up and enjoy the laugh. We'll get back to you. Like actually, and we're just dying. Lou's idea of a laugh is to nod, smile, and point. This is Lou. No, he was saying during the break that that guy was absolutely hilarious until he was trying to be funny. Trying to be funny, yeah. Then he would be all corny, Lou. He Luke. was funny until he like tried to make a joke. Yeah, he's just funny. And just, it just wasn't. Lou was yeah. great. And cop talk, talk, telling you how to get abs. Just talk. Yeah. Just talk about the porno video in terms that you know grandma uses. <laughs> he was great today, Lou. Oh yeah. And uh, David Tell was great today. Don't forget uh, his HBO special Saturday I'm night. I'm sure it's gonna be hilarious, hilarious, man. Here's your uh, line of the day, people. Here comes. That's going to be a weird social. But in the old days, it was just like, hey, son, we'll go to the game. Yeah, exactly. And if that kid ever fell down, you'd have to comfort him from a distance as he's crying. <laughs> you'd have to have like a stick with like a tissue on the other <laughs> side, like, trying to wipe yeah, his tears can. away. Just so there's no. Hold Shut you. up for two minutes. <laughs> Congrats to Bill Burr, Lyme today. Yes. All right. Uh, well, Caroline's all weekend long starting tonight. Beautiful. And that's it. Let's get two, the one, fuck two, out. 757 yep. 4100 and, and that's how we end. Let's go. Thank you. All right, Later. Thanks, guys. Bye. Hit it. Go.